fire alarm before I even cracked it open to mm -hmm. find out what to most likely find out what kind of batteries it takes. <laughs> Do you know what? Ever heard of a DC 9 volt battery? I have. My my fire alarm takes those. I don't even know how to install those and remove them. I was praying that they were just double A's. <laughs> Cuz like as funny as it is to annoy Chinzilla with my annoying with my annoying ass streams. Uh I do kind of want that fixed. Oh shit, forgot tweet, forgot tweet. No prom. I'm trying to figure out where the... Oh, fuck. Almost forgot to turn this on as well. And I have ended up turning off the... I need to find the audio settings. T... Docs menu and okay, menu bar. The LGBT community is so weird with its tweets. Not also, like what they type. So, I will put an LGBT, and it'll be completely random if that day LGBT has a lot is popping off, or if LGBTQ is popping off, or LGBTQIA is popping off. <laughs> it's completely random. There is no unification amongst which one of those to use, so that's part of the problem, I guess. Yeah. That's what... It was actually kind of the reason why I was so against there being an LGBT community, because you're uniting a complete umbrella of people under one thing, hoping to God everyone agrees with your vision of what they are. And they do not, because several groups within the LGBT community, in fact, do not recognize each other's existence. Exactly. And it's like it expecting... It feels like, weird. It's like referring to the EN VTuber community as one united community, which it most certainly is not. No. Not in the slightest. <laughs> it's so fucking divided. Yeah, no kidding. All right. I'm trying to remember where the... Where did I put that? It's disappeared. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna freak if... If I freeze up again. Because... I'm hoping that this was a one-time thing where... My... Uh, application here for underclocking the GPU just happened to... Cough. And fuck everything up because if it's so bad that I can't run any Unity programs, which all my VTubing programs are based off of, I effectively won't be able to stream until I buy a new GPU and I can't buy a new GPU for prices that are not uh, scuffed as all hell. I mean, I could afford they one. They are going but... down though. Yeah, but I kind of don't want to wait another few months to re-debut just to wait for a car to become under underground or so. <laughs> At that point, I might as well just get another one off eBay because that's where I got all my recent graphics cards. Might as well, right? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of annoyed right now because while I was trying to fix everything, I accidentally uh, exited out of the box in OBS that shows you your volume controls, your volume levels, and I can't remember for the life of me which Can one I of those that is on here. Is it... Audio doc. Uh. I know it's audio mixer, but where is the audio mixer? It's is it like hiding in something or? Happy Friday, Seal Club. 
Indeed, this is always something to celebrate that neither of us died yet. <clears throat> but I mean, but I digress. Yes, neither of us have died, and that's a good thing. Here we go. I found a do I found a docks. Now how to dock them back into the main thing. Okay, we could put that there. Put this here. Oh. That's not supposed to happen. Is there ever going to be a stream that is not scuffed to hell in some form? This there. I am trying my hardest to figure out how to advertise this fucking podcast. Um... I mean, what do you because usually it, do? Talk about new set podcasts. Well, in this podcast, it's focused on obviously the guests as a VTuber, <laughs> their journey as a VTuber, any conflicts with reality, and any con conflicts they had with their own community. Oh, as really? an attempt to dispel the mis you know the mystifying aspect of being a VTuber influencer on the internet. I see, and hopefully. Maybe, just maybe, lower the amount of parasocial relationships on the internet. It's funny because I didn't know if that was actually what we were going to discuss or if that's just something that could be a possible it's discussion It's mostly later. just me talking to, talking to you normally. I just throw uh, questions at you I, I think are interesting. Okay. I mean, I say it because when I was telling some people about, oh, hey, I'm going to be doing my first podcast, whatever, or podcast ever, and they asked me what it was about, that's what I brought up. And at least Grandpa VT was like, oh, you should show us when you're going to do that. And some others were interested in seeing the, vo seeing the, uh, or listening to the podcast after we're done. No pressure or anything. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I think uh, I... you can always tell him my door is always open to any VTuber, not just my friends. <laughs> well, I'm glad you can see because I'm trying to figure out what I should put after your name. Because if I tonight on Hell on the Hell Talk podcast, I'll be interviewing Lawler's Net on his journey as a VTuber. Come and learn about. And I was bidding about putting. You could just uh, on his journey as a VTuber. Come and learn about. Uh, your favorite VTubers. You could just I'd, call me. Grammatically correct. I mean, you could just use Lawler Hicks if you like. Uh, my. Did, I'm putting your at there. That's why it says Lawler Net. Oh, Lawler's okay. Net. At Lawler's Net, yeah. That works. It's yeah. Because I'd rather people click on your at to advertise yourself. Oh. I did the exact same thing with the Bloody Karma. <laughs> Because even if I, even though I'm small, I'd rather give somebody some support. Oh. Well, that's just, that's like totally, completely wholesome. Um, regarding the, or regarding like, actually, let me go ahead and switch my scene here to just chatting where it should be to begin with. I'm going to move my avatar over here, over to the side, really quick. How do I do this again? Have I forgotten all that I've learned how to do this stuff? Uh, intro theme. I want to silence the intro theme. Increase donations to VT. I don't think this sounds. On his journey as a VTuber, come and learn about your fellow VTubers' struggles. The struggle is real. <laughs> Me, my theology. Because, like, I think that I think the word struggle might relate to more VTubers and might make them interested. I don't know. It kind of does. I mean, it is a struggle to get into this sort of industry, to be honest. It is. We're going well, I guess we should start off by first admitting that VTubing is a form of the entertainment industry with all that, with all that entails, good and bad. Yeah. By the way, Zao, um, do you, how would you like me to toss your avatar on my stream? Do you want me to like, uh, create a? Do you want to do that thing where you pretty much pop up on the uh, video in Discord, and I'll basically uh, make give a me transparency one with yours? Because I do have a. 
Uh, what's your just chatting screen? I actually never, despite the fact you watched my stream, I have actually never watched yours. Uh, you could pop over and find out really quick, or I could just take a screenshot of it really quick. If you could send me a link, that would be nice. I'll just type it down here. I don't think in... I follow you on Twitch. That's weird. Mm -hmm. I follow all of my friends on Twitch. What the fuck? I get that a lot for some reason. And just the other day, I got followed by Rika Mian, and you're like, oh my god, I thought I followed you from, like, months ago. And I'm like, and, I don't know, Twitch and Twitter are weird like that. <laughs> no, Ace Iceland, or Iceland Weaver in my chat says, no struggles, only shruggles. Many shrugs to be had. Shrugs. Well, I would argue that it's not, being a VTuber is nothing but a struggle, both on the mental and the physical level. Mm-hmm. Rather we try to admit it or not. I actually... I was expecting to... Ah! What is happening? I have been followed. Thank you for the follow. That's... Yeah, I was like, I... I just... It's just that I recently realized I never followed you on Twitch, but I follow you on Twitter. <laughs> and now that's all oh, changed. You have, you have Leap Motion. Nice. Mm -hmm. I do have Leap Motion. Um, I also right. discovered recently a way to mimic the iPhone's uh, eye facial mo facial <laughs> eye eye cap thing, Majigger. So, except we're on an Android phone, so I'm going to, and it's free too. And I'm going to install it on one of my old uh, Galaxy or Galaxy ta Android tablets and set up a. Oh, did you not try to do the other techniques where it makes your mouth not? Go all janky? Oh, I do. I currently use the expression settings in VC Face, which needs more calibrations, but I figured if I can just mimic the stuff yeah. that Apple users use, might as well do that. Uh, see if that works Fair out. Fair enough. Because one of my VC I just know that my mouth doesn't go this insane. Well, and I never met, and I never messed with it. Do you mean the way my mouth is going right now, or...? It's big enough to fit a $5 foot long. Uh... Ah... <laughs> I miss five dollar like footlongs. When, when you're, they're no longer five dollars. They cost depressing. Yeah, they cost like eight bucks now. They don't even advertise them as five dollar footlongs anymore. Where I remember they still did, and they cost eight dollars. <laughs> I would like I a five dollar footlong, please. I remember being on camp. I remember being on campus, and we had a subway on campus, and they did. It was like you said; they actually advertised the five dollar foot long, but it didn't cost five dollars. It cost eight dollars, and the reason they gave for it was that, well, technically we are a, out we were outsourced by the company that was hired to provide food, overpriced food, to your college, so we technically don't need to follow the rules of Subway, even though we are a franchisee of Subway, and. It was bullshit. They're not wrong because that actually is how it works. Is that really how it works? They weren't just bullshitting us. They, no, they weren't bullshitting you. No, that's kind of fun. So the thing is, is that like uh, all so Subway is the cheapest food business that you could purchase yourself into as a franchisee. No shit, really. Uh, for example, McDonald's is like fifty to a hundred k, I think. Well. Uh, Subway is 10k to come in as a franchisee. That's about the same amount as Steak and Shake is currently. Yeah. I don't know if those numbers are still up to date, so if you're looking into getting into that type of business, I wouldn't uh, recommend it at the moment. I briefly... Which kind of things going under? I briefly considered actually getting into a Steak and Shake franchisee, but after watching like three seasons of Kitchen Nightmares and was it three seasons? Two seasons of Kitchen Nightmares and one. one? Yes, it's scene one. I am a god. I just thought to myself, like, I don't think I have the. I, I can't be oh, a restaurant. Do you have an uh, adaptive? What is it called? Adaptive images. Uh. What do you mean by that? Discord adaptive images. A reactive images, you mean? Yeah, reactive. There you go. I do have reactive images, yes. Let me get that for you. Right, can you send me your link in DMs? Sure. One moment. I just have to copy pasta uh, my promotion link and a couple other servers really quick. Well, actually, one other server. Well, VC Face is the one spot my cursor actually shows up in. That's hilarious. <laughs> but let me um, also get the... 
I'm gonna switch the scene really quick, and then I'm going to go to which one of these is it again? I really need to clean out my sources. I got way too many in here, and I got way too many sources stuck in here. Um, which one of these is it? <laughs> oh, that reminds me. The last thing I guess was bloody car, but that's funny. Mm -hmm. I had him sitting on. I had him because he gave me a chibi figure. <laughs> of himself, uh, I, I made I made him stand on like the edge of the sofa <laughs> because he gave his chibi figure gave off gremlin energy. I can't imagine I'm gonna go being some... a gremlin. To be honest, he's definitely not a gremlin. But I need to get some water. Here. No problem. And meanwhile, I got your active image. Uh, let's get some music playing here in the background chat. And we're going to play something probably monster cat related, maybe. Or I should probably look for stream friendly, um, stream friendly or lo fi hip hop or synth wave or something, or vapor wave, maybe some Simpson wave going on in there. YouTube will be our great provider for this purpose. Baby shark, do 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 do, baby. Let's see here. Japanese lo-fi 24-7 aesthetic hop music, lo-fi hip-hop music, no co no copyright lo-fi hip-hop beats. Do I dare trust this, uh, what, this thing? Let's use this space code. You actually really shouldn't trust uh, ah! YouTubers when it comes to no copyright because, uh, Fuck, that's loud. Don't really work. Either way, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Hell Talk podcast. Uh, if you can give me one second, I'll be putting Lawler on screen so I can actually introduce him. Go ahead and give me your reactive image as well so I can toss it in mine. Yeah, just give me one second. Mm -hmm. Add. Add. Uh, how do you do this again? Add browser input. Create new. Uh, where's mine? There he is. Let me grab yours really quick. Beep boop. Thank you. I just like how it's just your torso. Mm-hmm. By, by the way, uh, X, how do you say your name? Either way, welcome to the uh, stream. Funny thing is, everyone, everyone's though a guy until the quietest man in the room starts coming and shitting at the same time. Interesting. Very fascinating. <laughs> With that said, I forgot. Are you 18 plus? I am way 18 plus. Okay, good. No worries. I sir. just read that without even thinking because uh, on my screen there is actually words that said "nutting to death." <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it is a reference to a Dong and Rocker stream. Before I explain that, uh, let me get back. Let me restart my intro. Every everybody, welcome. To today's Hell Talk podcast, I am here today with the lovely individual known as Lawler. Please introduce yourself. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Lawler Hicks. I am a shit poster, artificial intelligence, what were born on a certain text board out there in interwebs. In my time, the year was 2077. Totally no relation to a video game that had come out recently in this timeline. And I mostly play old video, old indie video games. I draw really bad art. I emulate Bob Ross, and I also grow plants, among other things. There we go. I moved. You're right next to me right now because your body feels awkward if it's not behind my desk. <laughs> Like I actually have, I could actually show my full body because I'm 3D, but because I am too lazy to set up that thing, and I now need to flip the way this works real quick. Mm -hmm. Actually, I am looking this way. Oh my god! What's up? This is gonna look too visually weird. Oh my god! I I am bothered by my own genius. 
I am bothered by my own genius. You sure you don't want to try the Discord hack for putting two viewer white avatars in the same stream? I am too lazy. No, okay. <laughs> if it was if it was yesterday in the mi in the middle of the night as I was getting bored, uh, I would totally figure that out. <laughs> But let's just start off with an introductory question. What, uh, what would you say is the hardest thing for you as a VTuber? Um, well, a lot of the technical as a lot of the technical aspects of VTubing that require kind of sprucing things up, I do not have skills in. Despite being an artificial intelligence, I'm actually terrible at programming, believe it or not. So a lot of the Assets that Why the I fuck are you not coming through on desktop? What? Um, I'm not. Your wavelength like, isn't showing. Oh dear! What the fuck is going on? That's not good. <laughs> Audio capture. Mm, that's not gonna work. Your desktop audio should be capturing everything popping up in Discord too by default, so that's kinda of bizarre. It is bizarre. Um maybe... it's the tech it it's showing that you're bl blinking. I am so annoyed by this. I'm tilted. It's showing that I'm blinking. So Discord is probably picking it up, but probably not OBS. Mm. Try going to desktop audio properties in OPS and then checking the Is selected device. Nope, not capturing that. Hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> Okay. That crash a few minutes ago must have been a fluke because if I was still suffering from that problem, then my computer should have froze by now, but it has not. Really hope that doesn't happen again because I'm going to riot otherwise. Oh, that's interesting. Nothing like using your emergency savings to purchase a new graphics card. Whatever. I'll just write it off on my taxes, I guess. I don't think you can write it off on your taxes legally. You can if you register as a small business and technically, well not technically, if you become an affiliate with Twitch, you are considered by Amazon as a contractor. So as long as you have all the legal stuff squared away, you totally could. Oh, that as far I don't know what actually you should be in the U.S. Uh, the way the U.S. looks at it is if you start using it personally, like you start playing video games with it, it's no longer a work write-off. Hmm, really? I've looked into that again because I thought I was reading that this w could be counted as self-employment, but we'll see. We will have to see. As it is, um, Twitch actually doesn't even send you... At least they claim that they don't send you a 1044. Or is it 1040 or 1044? It's probably 1044 unless you, until you make at least $600 to their platform. But I wonder if they're going to... If by next year come tax season if they're going to send me one for at least what little i've made so far which is still around uh, uh did you opt into the uh ad program i think you are affiliate right yeah i'm an affiliate when you do that you have to have the ad program in there you could turn it off for some users but not completely well if you're correctly if, uh you could actually schedule ads and if you do that you're guaranteed a hundred a month no shit? I guess a separate program. Yeah, there's a separate program Twitch hmm. started. And, and if you opt into it, that uh, if you opt into allowing ads on your stream more often, uh, they will give you $100 minimum. Interesting. Yep. <laughs> 
So in six months, you easily just, oh, no matter what, get a hundred bones. <laughs> in that case, if that were the case, then I would definitely make sure that I'm registered as self-employed. Or I could actually put this under even, even I could probably even put this under tips, really. Um, if it reaches that point, but. This is, this is nice, man. Gentlemen, we'll be right back. I'm going to close this. I'm going to close OBS and open it again. Mm hmm Do I dare try out Vampire Survivor again to see if it will crash? Eh, we'll do that tonight, maybe. Pulling out my fries. How about these ladies on the way home? <laughs> Why is it taking so long just to end the stream? Did you push stop right, streaming? Yes. Hmm. I have no idea, then. Well, now it stops, so now I can do it all over again. In the meanwhile, let me go ahead and get some lessons done in Duolingo. <laughs> Why? What's wrong now? It's still doing it! Uh-oh. spaghetti -o. Do I have to update? Update what? Do I have to update OBS? You, what uh, version are you running? I'm still running 27.2.3, and there's a new one that came out recently. Yeah, I wonder if it's trying to punish me. Punished for your hubris. I did not think that was an option, but that's kind of cool that it is. <laughs> According to Pace the Robot in my chat, you can use a write-off for both business and personal uses. Well, that's cool. That's interesting. I wonder if my financial advisor would know what to do about that, even though they are in charge of the art I'm going to try something stupid mm -hmm. real quick. At least one benefit of moving my operating system to an SSD means that even if I do crash again, I could get back online in like seconds when it used to take minutes. That and I think something. Why is it Discord recognized? Discord's not recognized. It can hear the. Uh. <laughs> Did you check your video settings in Discord under input device and output device? Good question. Good question. It's always that that ends up screwing up for some reason. <laughs> I Haste. will destroy you, Discord. Haste the robot says, but only the proportion that is used for the business, so it gets complicated. Let's say you what work 40 fuck? hours a week. Which is 160 out of 672 or 24%. If your internet bill is 62 per month, you could then expense 24% uh, okay. of that amount or roughly 1400. Oh, ball sacks. Oh, ball sacks. Nope. Oh, it's now it's coming right. through yours. <laughs> Try talking. Muchy muchy. Danger you. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, for fuck's sake. Hello? Hello? I will destroy this program. <laughs> uh... Try now? Hello, hello. Again? Moshi Moshi. For... Discord, your destruction is nigh. <laughs> is it still not working properly? Same with you, spam callers. 
Bro, we have seven viewers on tonight. This is awesome. I'm not used to seeing that being above six. So thank you once again to everyone who showed up today, wherever you're from. I do apologize for the technical difficulties. But as you know, absolutely no VTuber stream can possibly go unscuffed. Every stream must be scuffed. It's like a fact of life. Once you embrace the scuff, everything gets so much easier. What the fuck? But for the most part, the IRS doesn't care as long as the purchase is both ordinary and necessary. You know, what? it feels like the IRS is actually not as strict as we are led to believe, unless you're like intentionally trying to defraud them of many tens of thousands. I mean, we already know that they Discord, don't... why are you like this? What's Discord doing this time? Okay, what is my thing on? Stereo. Mm -hmm. What if I put it on Hansery real quick? <laughs> Alright, talk. Mushy, mushy. <gasps> I am a genius! What was the problem? After all, in the end. Okay, 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 okay. okay. This is so stupid. I, I hate everything for this. I hate everything. <laughs> I, I have to make sure both Discord and my personal audio device that's currently set on my desktop are perfectly aligned, despite the fact I can hear you through Discord. That's kind of messed up. It's, what the fuck? <laughs> um, it's a beast, isn't it? So it's it, such a mystery. But paste, paste the through. stream must begin. Begins? Awesome, at last. By, yes. The return of Zhao has begun. <laughs> I am sorry, children, that I have left you for so long. <laughs> but now we've returned with the third intro. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the third episode of Hell Talk. My brain is fried again. <laughs> and I am here with our lovely guest, Lawler. Please introduce yourself. Hey again, chat. I'm Lawler Hicks. I am a shit poster artificial intelligence that was born on a text board in the year 2070X. Um, in this timeline, I act, would instead work as a VTuber because there's not much there's not much else out there for a shit posting AI to do. Stuck in the early 2020s, my content mostly consists of obscure indie video games, virtual reality stuff. Uh, bad art, emulating our Lord and Savior, Bob Ross, holy be thy name, among other things, such as, I have a wide variety of hobbies all over the place, actually. Sometimes I'll go on tangents and talk about growing plants, which is a very odd thing for an artificial intelligence to talk about. But then again, so are a lot of other things. And I'm now here to talk about other stuff, it appears. Nice to meet all of you. Yes, we are here to discuss your life and possible future as a VTuber. <laughs> and to begin, I'll ask a different question because everyone else heard this one. What made you become a VTuber? Um, I Why VTuber? I've actually been been interested in doing content or doing VTubing content for a while, even before VTuber the term VTuber was like, I guess. Coin. Uh, ha coined or a household name. Um, my first program was basically face rig, and that's back when it first came up as kind of a gimmick uh, on Steam. And basically, people just kind of fucked around with that for things like Skype calls and then Discord calls. Uh, I never really knew where I was going to go with that. It was just kind of like a toy for a while. And then I saw VTubing popping off during the pandemic as a whole. There we go. Now my bag's open. No problem. Uh, I did kind of mess around with an avatar in Viewwood for a little bit, but nothing really came out of it. These sort of things were just sort of like those sort of plants you'd be a lot that you're all like, oh, this would be cool to do, but then nothing comes of it. Then later on, a friend of mine was also trying to get into VTubing herself uh, to basically serve as a new hobby. 
and she originally wasn't going to was going to just save up money to commission a live 2D avatar, but then I was like, well, you know, you could just do this stuff in VR too for free. What? Why even bother anymore spending a couple grand on a live 2D avatar? So I showed her how to do that. She got some friends in a different community that we were uh, both part of to help her out with setting up all that stuff, and I decided maybe I should get off my ass and finish my own avatar and join her. Uh, things end up accelerating in that regard because um, what to, is my dog doing? to cut a long story short, um, so there are some fallout. There are some fallout in the previous community, and I had to uh, make an exit, so to speak, very quickly. So once again, with a lot of with not a little help from my friends, but a lot of help from my previous community. <clears throat> from a certain text board. <laughs> I decided to just jump in. I didn't even bother with debuting anymore. I just started streaming like I usually do. Uh, moved to a personal Discord with some help with friends like Aislinn, who you may see around my com community a lot. Uh, started gradually making things a little bit more professional with like stream panels and with like a set schedule. And now we're here. Which is funny too, because prior to all this, I wasn't very fond of Twitter or Twitch, but um, I've just since long discovered that, like a lot of things, it's pretty much the community and what you get out of it is what you make of it. So we'll all chill now. Yeah, I remember coming in here. I was like, uh, "Twitter, everyone just says Twitter is a hellscape no, that no one can survive." I mean, it kind of. If you is. survived, you're one of the big dog. It helps. Yeah, it's just like right now, I'm too far under the radar that I don't get creepers in my DMs. Man, I was getting creepers in my DMs even back when I used to be a mod in the Steam forums, and even back during my... Well, I guess I'm technically still a mod for said text board, but I don't know. That's kind of what happens when you're when people assume your gender online, even when few, they just... That's just a sort of thing that sort of happens over time, I guess. Oh, I just, I just realized I actually never asked you this question. What is your gender? What's your pronouns? Um, I don't have any pronouns. I person, if oh. like biologically speaking, I am male in the MeTuber world. Um, I've since come to turn. Mm -hmm. I've since decided that to I self identify as non binary because I don't really feel strongly one way or the other. At the same time, I'm the mm. at the same time, I also personally feel that my how I'm perceived, what I'm perceived to be, will be at the mercy at of the viewer. So I don't really mind one way or the other. I encourage people to um, hold whatever they think I am, or what I look, or what I look like in their own mind, and that I accept that. I don't have I really have much problem with that unless it's intentionally designed to damage my reputation or to hurt Unironically, me. Ironically, if you had black hair, I would straight, straight up say you're just a femboy <laughs> if you had black hair. Why would the color of my hair change that? I mean, I also identify as well, a femboy because personally, it, but why does... Well, it's because, like, okay, so a fuckboy femboy would cover one eye with their hair. <laughs> Because it's anime as shit, and a lot of women like it. Is that really a thing? I mean, I guess there was a thing Do where... Do you watch TikTok? Do you even I, I watch fucking... YouTube shorts? Do you even look at cringe? No, I intentionally... Jesus. I make it a point to avoid this all that stuff, to be honest. Which sounds very funny coming from someone who's a content creator now, but... <laughs> Bless your heart, and I'm sorry to anyone hearing me chew fucking wedge fries, because I, I had nothing for lunch, and this is my dinner right now. <laughs> um, Femboy is actually another term that I found very endearing, even though it started off uh, mostly as a kink thing. Let's let's be honest. I'm, no... It actually started off as a derogatory term, at least where I'm from. Oh, a lot and of things started off derogatory. A thing. Oh yeah, everything does. Yeah, I mean... And it's like, it's so weird for me to, like... I have, I had my, honestly, like, as someone that thought they were straight, I had a jir journey, but I also found it interesting how the people around me had a journey of gay acceptance. Because 
in my state, it was, uh, you know, it was actually unironically dope, super cool, lit AF to make fun of the gays, bruh. Those people, they're not human. They're not, they're not people. Mm-hmm. And I think when I was in freshman, it started to change. The gay jokes really ramped up uh, during middle school, uh, but they started dying down in high school. Hmm. It does. It was actually kind of interesting watching the. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say zeitgeist, because I'm fairly sure that would be an inappropriate use of the word. But it was kind of interesting watching the gradual acceptance, or at least tolerance, of LGBT, etc over the years i remember when i was in high school and uh for context i myself actually went to an all boy high school growing up Mm -hmm. um and it was not so much that people hated homosexuals or actively went after them because we knew they exist it's not like anyone's ignorant of that it was more of a fear of them and i think there was one time when the conversation was had about why do people feel that way because you could kind of tell that no one actively hated homosexuals they were more like scared of finding out that someone next to them might have been one which is funny in retrospect because after we graduated it turns out several people in my own, several people in my own class were if not gay then bi curious or were finding spend the next years in college finding themselves but um it was something I remember at least one possible suggestion or possible answer to that that someone put forward was the fear of if you meet someone that is interested in the same sex that they might be interested in you and the kind of uncomfortable feeling of not knowing how to respond to that because this person could be your sibling. Wait, wait, what the fuck? Ignore that. I don't know why I said that. This person could be like a close friend and you don't know how to deal with them crushing on you. And in retrospect, that's kind of silly because it's not very different when you think about Freud, say, you're friends with someone of the opposite gender and they don't feel the same way. So you either have to be the one rejecting them or they reject you. And it sucks on sucks on several levels regardless. And then when I was in college and people, well, of course, people start start to accept themselves or and start coming out to themselves. I remember the first time someone came out to me, they were afraid that I was going to like attack them or something. And they were kind of being around the bush about telling me about a breakup they had recently had. And eventually they had a hard time being evasive. And I was, I didn't, I was kind of dense <laughs> as a college student. I didn't catch on that they're being evasive about their sexuality so eventually they're just like look i'm gay and i'm like okay what's wrong with that and they're like i thought you were going to like yell and scream at me and something i'm like why the fuck would i do that i've known you for years (laughs) (laughs) and another one the second time someone came out to me it was because they were shit face and they're like lols so i just wanted to let you man i like dick lols i just wanted to let you know that when we were in homeroom together, I fucking had the huge biggest crush on you. I wanted to fuck you in high school, except I totally just fucked a chick right now, so I'm totally not gay. And I'm like, go to sleep, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not shitting you. That's literally a conversation. It was through Facebook chat. And I'm like, what? That is the best way to rebut, to find out someone was crushing hard. <laughs> I feel bad for them too. I hope that later on they realize that it's okay. You can like both. You don't need to have sex with one of the genders think, to prove yourself. All right. I think it's so weird because I think bisexuality is probably the hardest one to come to terms with. At least it was for me. Because obviously it was you're the like one or the other. None. There's no way you can like both. You pick a side, man. You pick a side. It's so dumb, too. I mean, like... I mean, I'm not going to delve too, in, too into this, but I have met that group. And going back to our previous touching on the LGBT community as a whole can't really unify at all. I have unfortunately met 
the kind of uh, people who seem to think that um, bisexuality is impossible and you either you're gay or you're not. And I really I always feel I really feel like that mentality is just dumb. I, I can't oh, I can't even about, wrap my I head think around you're talking it. about turfs if I remember I remember the term correctly. Um, turfs, I think. Trans exclusionary feminists. Trans exclusionary radical feminists. I that guess was it. They're... Because they also believe that you can only be gay or straight, and there's no such thing as in the middle. I guess they're part and... of it, but also, like, there is, there are just like homosexuals in general who, who feel away for one way or another. It's kind of toxic. Uh, not gonna lie. <laughs> it is super toxic. I mean, I don't know. To me, it just feels like now I have more opportunities. I will uh, say that I do tend to keep the... I still have mostly kept this sort of thing to myself. I don't openly talk about this sort of thing in Meet Space. It's mostly something only people online know. But also because I personally don't... Cons I don't... Unlike a lot of people, I don't consider sexuality to be... Uh, a part of my personality and personality that I believe should be public. There's a lot of things, parts of, I'm the kind of person that likes to separate my personalities across multiple areas. And this is one of the things that I keep mostly reserved to certain people for my own personal reasons. But at the same time, it's like, regardless of how you feel about that sort of thing, I don't see the point in shitting on bisexual people telling them you need to choose a side because to me it the i think it's the same thing with your gay uh with your anti-gay story because uh the i think gay people and straight mo uh, from let, let's just stop at the side of the gay i yeah. think gay people are just uncomfortable by the fact that there's bisexuals and there's also a spectrum of bisexuals that they lean more to women but they still like but they still like the D or they like the D more, but they won't, uh, but they'll still go for the women. That's very true. I mean, I myself um, tend to tend to prefer women over men, but, eh, you know, just sort of yeah, self-flux all the time. there'll be that person that says, well, you're straight then, huh? You can't be true bisexual. You have to like them equally. You have to be straight in the middle. <sighs> it's so 50, fucking 50. stupid, man. My God. I actually had someone tell me that and was like, this is a very fascinating experience. That is ex that's the exact words I said in my head. It's so insulting. I didn't even get that. bothered by it. <laughs> I was like, this is a very fascinating experience. I need to probe this man. <laughs> what? Like anytime someone is just like genuinely like racist, homophobic, uh, you know, something disgusting, I want to know more. Which... They intrigue me. Just sort of like study because how they came to be. How do you exist? How are you real? You know, as much as people used to shit on sociology when I was in college, I feel like this is the sort of thing that a sociologist would be tasked with studying, and I can imagine it being very fascinating, to be honest. Yeah, it's certainly like a lot of people just want to get rid of like uh, these fascist, racist bigots, but it's like. I almost want to study them because it's very interesting to see how they form. And I feel I like... want to know their entire life by the very smallest detail. And you know, it's kind of sad to say, well, not sad to say, but it's, I guess it's uncomfortable to say that a lot of it has to do with the fact that none of this is really simple or simplified. At the end of the day, all of us and how we've come to our decisions and how we treat people is excessively exceedingly complicated you could study any of these people's lives and their what led to them becoming bigoted in the form that they are will be every bit as messy as the rest of us in my opinion the way i look at it is that you actually can simplify someone's life by a few bullet points and you can avoid those bullet points uh, like, for instance, there is a study that shows that if you hit your child, you actually uh, basically just uh, put their life on ultra nightmare mode. Like, not in that moment, but you put their future in ultra nightmare mode because they have, they're far more likely to become antisocial, uh, sh uh, shelled in people 
their cre- uh, any creative project that they have in mind, they will probably not pursue it due to fear of failure. And it also increases the chances of them becoming a drug addict. Not to mention self-esteem issues out the asshole. <laughs> yep. I was telling this to my little sister. She was like very surprised because like we were talking about like, well, t- uh, if, when she has kids and they start fighting in the back of her car while she's driving, that's going to mess up the handling. So she's going to yell, yell at them to sh- uh, shut the fuck up. Uh, and she uh, said she was going to threaten the hand. And I was like, I'll uh, I'll entertain this with a few jokes, but then I'll educate her. That is like, oh, yeah, there's actually studies that say this is actually very detrimental to a child's health. And believe it or not, there was a fucked. There's actually controversy because this study was shown. The soccer moms were like, the soccer moms and uh, jock dads were like, well, I got beat up like as a kid, and I turned out a rat. They probably. I, I turned out to be a fine citizen of the United States. I wouldn't be surprised if they turned out all right in some ways and badly in others, and just don't realize it. Which seems to be the case for a lot of us, honestly. They think gay people are tools. Hmm. Tools as in the insult or tools as in to be manipulated for their own use? Or both? Manipulation. Some both. Hmm. Like, it's just an example thing, but it's it's an example of, like, wrong think. Wrong think? Yeah, you you got the idea, but you're not going in the right direction. It's like when you tell your friend, hey, throw a grenade, but you realize you didn't point, so they throw the grenade behind you. <laughs> That's horrible, but I like the metaphor. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. It's, like, it's, it's a very easy metaphor to get because everyone has played an FPS at least once. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, but it's kind of like that. Because believe it or not, I don't know if, how many people think this, but bigoted racist homophobes are not in every single corner they're just really silent and will not tell you that they're them people that are being actually homophobic to you are either children people that want to people that want to get a rise out of you or they're actually that so it's like is it better to treat them like they're children and not even acknowledge their existence (laughs) Because the less you acknowledge them, the more they don't feel valid if they are a racist. And that's it. And sometimes it can even lead to them eventually asking the question, am I the person that's wrong? Am I the bad guy? Yeah. There's actually this one YouTuber uh, named Linus Tech Tips. He was calling his wife on his way to work. I love Linus Tech Tips. Actually, I think it was his way home. (laughs) I love it. I love him too. Uh, He was was calling his wife, and he saw a billboard saying, Stop Asian hate. And oh my God. this kind of, and this threw him off. Like this actually kind of annoyed him because like what bigoted racist would change their life because they saw a fucking billboard. What's funny is the, uh, stop Asian. Wait, shit. My bad. I, I missed. Some, I heard one thing and thought of a different thing. My bad. <laughs> yeah. Stop Asian hate. It was just, that was the whole billboard. Stop Asian hate. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the entire message. And he, I don't know if you remember this, but he, Yvonne is Asian. His wife is Asian. So, so everybody in chat, don't get mad at him. He he has the he has the Asian card that agreed with him. Because <laughs> like when you think about it, when were you convinced by an ad to buy something unless you really wanted that something? I really feel uh, I kind of dislike billboards heavily because I always felt like they don't actually change the people who they're try who they're targeting, but they do raise the egos of the person of the people that uh, posted it to begin with. Yeah, for, that's an ego stroke. Like for example, um, I remember years ago I saw this on Kickstarter. Uh, there are a bunch of atheists that want to to stick it to Christians by posting billboards that were insulting to Christians everywhere, and I just thought like. Mm-hmm. This just makes you guys look like the assholes now because you complain about, I mean, evangelicals, etc. like to do all this bullshit to you that annoys people that aren't them, but 
posting out of context quotes to disparage people to make yourselves feel great about yourselves doesn't actually solve anything either. That was a long time ago though, but it's not even just that. I've seen other billboards for other things, other political things that always felt like as a whole ice wars, regardless of whether or not I agreed or disagreed with the statement it was trying to put forward. I go every day when I go home from work, there's this one billboard. I hate this billboard. No, it's a billboard for a school. A cat I think it's a Catholic school to be exact. And it's just the guy, like the guy pops off the billboard. <laughs> Is this what this black <laughs> black guy smiling on the billboard with a suit on uh advertising his school and there's like tiny children on the billboard with the name of the school on it the billboard is right on top of the school by the way well, it's just right there wow it's just him showing his cock to everyone on the road <laughs> like that's all that billboard is it's like i don't even I know one thing. I'm not taking my kid to your kindergarten school, you weirdo. It does seem kind of strange to advertise a school in that manner. I've never seen that before. And Okay, so this is actually even funnier because I, I have some experience because I always talk to my bosses. Mm -hmm. I used to work at a pizza place. I worked for Marco's Pizza mm -hmm. at one point. And I heard, overheard my boss talk about he regrets doing running a localized TV ad. Because he thought everyone in the area was, like, re remotely old enough to, you know, not give up cable. Mm -hmm. That did not get his advertising campaign going. That did not get him people. What got him people was, you know those tiny signs people put on their lawns? Mm -hmm. That shit worked. That works? Yes, it actually works. You put it, you put it all around the city, because we were actually on the edge of uh, the city. Uh, that's where we're based at, mm -hmm. and all around where we were, and people, it actually made people think about Marcos more. It made people want to call it the place. Ooh. It, it, and that said that, and that's how he said, like, yeah, that's how I actually uh, got people here is just by putting those tiny signs everywhere. No <laughs> billboards, no stupid, stupid ass TV ads, no YouTube marketing, just <laughs> that. And you know what? They are a lot less eye-searing than the big-ass billboards. Yeah. And no one and it also makes YouTube perfect ads. sense, because, like, it was... Where we at is a lot of co apartment complexes. People... Uh, so people tend to walk around. So uh, you put them next to a few apartment complexes, you get people thinking about pizza, and then when they get finally just chill one Saturday night, they order a fucking pizza, and they think... What place I need to go? What what place is nice and close? We live we're right next to a Domino's, so they call a fucking Marcos. Boom, <laughs> money. Because guess what's not on their lawn? A fucking Domino's. <laughs> it's a Marcos Pizza sign. Kind of makes me want to try Marcos Pizza now. We don't have any of those here, unfortunately. I have been told they're not good, but their chicken is fucking fire. <laughs> Over where I'm at, we got uh, we got Domino's, we got Pizza Hut, we got Papa John's, Little Caesars is back from the grave, and of course we have the regional special. I can't fucking talk. We have the regional specialty where I live as well, that people outside our state absolutely hate for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know it's one thing that's a little bit weird. Hmm? I always thought this would be quite the opposite, but. Homeowners don't order pizzas. Who? Homeowners. Really? Yeah, almost none of the pizzas I delivered were at homes, where I rather would have delivered to. Wow. People that live in apartments buy pizzas way more often. That kind of makes sense, actually, when you think about it. Yeah. Because I mean, it's not as difficult to just go in your garage and grab your car keys and go to wherever you want to go. Exactly. It's time but to it is more difficult when you go have to when you're on the 16th floor of your apartment. You have to go down to the elevator, uh, go to whatever level your car is parked at in the uh, car slot of the apartment, and get go out, 
uh, give the thing your ticket so you can leave because they have a a, a guard gate for some re fucking reason. Mm -hmm. And then you finally go to wherever the fuck you want. There's so much extra steps. It's just time so I think <laughs> people in apartments just order takeout more often than they go out. I can totally see that. Yeah. Not to mention, don't a lot of those apartments kind of have a rudimentary, if any, kitchen? So, I yeah, feel a lot like... of them do have a kitchen in it. Hmm. I don't know a single apartment that doesn't come with a kitchen, actually. Curious. Yeah, so if you have an apartment somewhere that's shitty enough to not have a kitchen in it, please DM me. <laughs> I'm curious. This is an actual interesting topic to me now. There probably are a couple places in kind of the, uh, not even inner city, more like a southern city of. I still, it I can't be from China. That's cheating. I'm not from China, despite being Asian myself. So I'm no telling reason. other people. Tell, I'm <laughs> telling other people that because like that's actual cheating. You can't give me a Chinese apartment. They're straight up living in cages now. Like the most I've seen is like this little cubby hole that has a sink. Might have a crappy wa might have a crappy uh washing machine well, also and has like Japan, two stoves. You can't do that because those aren't apartments; those are hotels. Wait, do Japanese houses not have kitchens by default? We're talking about apartments. Oh, apartments. Huh. Actually, now that you mention it, I don't think I've ever really seen one in one of those apartments in a manga before. The ones with the tatami mats and what all. But they're also fairly mm -hmm. small, so. Yeah, they, uh, Japanese uh, uh, apartments are small. <laughs> but what's actually kind of funny, uh, I don't know if you know Sea Dog VA. I do not. Uh, so he left to visit London. He, he, he is currently a Japanese citizen. Mm -hmm. He is a white man. So he went. So he went back to London to visit like friends and family. Mm -hmm. And when he had to go back to Japan. Straight up, he described the experience as if he was a prisoner. <laughs> like on a, he was given a business hotel that's supposed uh, that apparently the government doesn't understand. You're only supposed to stay in these hotels for like three days. That's what a per point of uh, point of a business hotel is mm -hmm. a three day long stay at most. Because no one can bear to stand in these, stand in these apartments. But he, they put him in a business hotel room. And straight up, he cannot leave this room. He is stuck there for, I think, a week or three. Just sitting in his room, listening to the same routine uh, PA system. Going like, hey, it's lunchtime. Hey, if... Uh, you might be getting your test results today. And that's referring to people that uh, have been there for a week. So why does everyone have to get the faint, uh, the same one, even though they have an app for it? There's an app for that. It's funny because Japan does not have, uh, does not like expediting things to the technology. They still use fax machines. Mm -hmm. So despite the fact they already have an app that lets people know if their test results are positive, or negative. Uh, they do it the hard way anyway. Just, man, they just do it the hard way. Make you sit the entire day and annoy the fuck out of people. They're just trying to go to fucking sleep. <laughs> Connor's like a late sleeper. And he, get, and he gets woken up every morning by the, hey, you might be leaving today, PA system. <laughs> giving him false hope. Heavy emphasis they on the might. Yeah. I just like hearing that it's like how is Japan this socially inept? No idea. Feels like decades perhaps or decades of culture finally coming to a head and not in a good way. Yeah. All these things are always a slow burn. Geopolitics is a mess. One thing I don't understand. More than one YouTuber actually said this. You have to, when you live in Japan, you're going to experience something called culture shock. 
Mm -hmm. Which is pretty normal if you're an American going to Germany. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that going to Germany can still feel like America. Especially since so at least there are some local locations there where people speak English, which kind of, I guess, lessens the culture shock a little bit. Yeah, but the thing is that, like, Japan culture shock versus everyone else is different in the fact that there is no adjustment on the Japanese side. On <laughs> the Europe side, it's an equal give and take. You adjust a little, they adjust a little. Japan, it's take, 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 and they do not realize how fucking abusive that is. <laughs> the people that stay are like, do not realize, like, if you are perfect targets for abusive relationships. Holy fuck. You're lucky that your wife is actually uh, an angel of a person. Because, <laughs> like, uh, con uh, everyone in the trash chase said it, that's like three guys. They said had a major culture shock. Even Joey, uh, he, his family visits Japan every once in a while, but he was born in Australia, raised in Australia. Never him, uh, and occasionally went to Japan. But it was still, a, he still had to adjust to the Japanese culture once he finally decided to live there. Because Japan is fantastic to live. It's hell. I mean, it's not fantastic. It's fantastic to visit. A uh, hell to live in. Yeah. Especially if you're a foreigner. Especially because it's foreigner. straight up a no tolerance policy if you lose your fucking card. They're just... As it's, it's essentially an identification card saying that you're a, form, a, former that, a foreigner that's allowed to live in this country. Do you have to wear one of those with you all the time? You're not wearing it, you're keeping it in your wallet. Mm -hmm. But an officer asks, hey, Hey, you Gaijin, you want, uh, are you allowed to be, be in this country? You have to show it. Man, and to think, people make fun of immigration issues over here in the States. Straight up, uh, Connor as a white man described uh, describe the experience of his first time being racially profiled. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. That's such it's an like, Asian thing. It's so weird. I mean, even the Philippines like, is like that. Some way, sometimes. Yeah. Because, like, uh, he was a. Uh, I think he was trying to walk home from. I forgot what he was got, walking home from, but he got off the train and he was walking home. And a cop was like, he, he was. He straight up yelled at him, stop, stop, stop. And, like, if he was a, a fucking villain, a straight up super villain. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the conversation, uh, the takeaway was he was trying to learn practice his English because that's what the department wanted. The department wants you to go up to any gaijin you can and practice your English. What oh, the man. hell? What kind of argument is that? What the shit? <laughs> At the end, he got you did get an apex, buddy, though. <laughs> Apex is super popular in Japan. Apex Legends? So the cop was like, yeah, the cop straight up said in English, do you play Apex? Oh my god. It's horrible. That's fucking yeah. horrible. Hello, Potato Chips 892. What the fuck? How's your day going? Yeah, it's so interesting. Japan is so interesting at how, like, culturally insensitive it is, but how they also expect you to respect their culture because uh they will if I correctly there actually is one store that's the inward i remember this store it's like i can't remember what it sold i'm pretty sure was it a hard r or not a hard r i don't think it was a hard r. it was a hard r I think. was it christ yes. i remember it being a hard r and they pronounced it the most effed up way ever, but I can't remember how they pronounce it, and neither will I even attempt to on stream. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> let's not do that. We're not gonna have a. We're not gonna have a PewDiePie moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
What a fucking potato. Uh, I was going to say to um, uh, one of my regulars and friends in, uh, that's currently in the chat, um, I can't laugh at this. This is frankly sad, but they, during our conversation, our, while, for, while, while discussing that, they just, they just uh, commented, uh, imagine not getting racially profiled, post made by African-American gang. So, yeah, I totally feel that. Well, I don't want to uh, keep quiet about this because I actually do plan to reveal this at a later time. But I actually am the potential demographic that would be offended by said word. Oh. I'm, I just have a super white as fuck voice. You know, I never really understood that concept. Like, there's a lot of people, even in other communities, that are like, oh, well, you guys could tell that I'm black, right? And I'm like, how are you, how are you all doing this? I literally cannot tell. Um, but almost everyone, with very, with one exception, I can tell when someone, I could almost tell when someone else is, almost always tell when someone else is Filipino or Southeast Asian, because I too am Southeast Asian. And for some strange reason, a lot of my peers who are also Filipino kind of have the accent, even if they're born and raised in the States, and I do not have this accent, which is given yeah, me... Despite the fact that I am given me the some same serious, as a few... Yeah. Sorry, you first. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. My brain... I, I tend to attach to ideas super short, so I end up, like, blurting it out before anyone else. Uh, but regardless... Uh, there's a few black creators I watch on occasion that sound super white, and I never knew that they were white until they turned on their whip. I mean, that <laughs> sounds super white, but they're black. But I never knew that they were black before they turned on their whip can. I was like, ah, oh, they're white. And I was like, how do I not be able to tell this? I suffer from the same affliction here. Like, um, I'm not sure in chat, our chat, I'm not sure if I told you all this story way back when, but I remember my one, my, one of the worst, and they weren't being mean about. They were just being casual about. Um, in my old gaming community that I was a bit, I was part of. I don't know how we got to the conversation, but we were in voice chat, and we were discussing this this exact thing. And one of them just literally just says like very casually, "Wait, so you're full? Wait, so you're Asian? I thought, I thought you're a white. I thought you're a white teenage American boy." And everyone just like fucking went silent and i just started fucking laughing i would have laughed not, <laughs> because i was like where the fuck did you get that and why so specific but to be honest uh, even with my you boy, didn't say any if you didn't even mention the fact that you're asian i wouldn't have even assumed you were yeah i mean like to be fair even with my voice i do get people who either who are like you're either like a you're either like a child like a minor or you're actually a one there's one person who's still convinced I'm them actually a tomboy in real life, which was low key kind of flattering actually. <laughs> but I get all kinds of stuff like that. But no one guesses that I'm Asian. Everyone guesses that and I quote, stereotypical white teenage American boy, and I'm like why? How? Some people have correctly guessed uh, what region of the states I'm from, which is also mind boggling since Midwesterners are supposed to have no accent, but apparently our accent is Midwestern, so. But yeah, it's the really thing, specific. The only reason why, like, technically speaking, like, everyone goes like, well, Americans have no accent, is because they just don't understand that Americans have an accent, they just don't understand that accent. They just understand Texan. <laughs> because I, that's me right here. I'm a, a proud uh, red-blooded Texan right here, and I can do this all day without even getting tired. What your bitch ass gonna do about it? My accent like morphs depending on the kind of person I'm with. Um, kind of like most of us, I really like accents, and sometimes I try to emulate them, even subconsciously. At least I remember back when I was visiting the Philippines oh, one time for vacation. Um, some people I was befriending over there, they didn't even realize that I was American. They thought, and I one of them thought I was from U of P, the University of the Philippines, and because the way when I talk with them. I start taking on their verbal tics, so even my the way I sound sounds more like Filipino who learned English secondhand, or learned English in school as opposed to having been raised with having been raised with English. 
So they when I they kind of were surprised to learn that I was not born and raised in the Philippines, I was born and raised in the States. And that also unfortunately kind of changed the tone of the conversation because it's like, oh, you're not really Filipino, you're actually an American that you're looks like it. So that's I'll get into that sort of stuff later. Hey Tetsuo or hey Sensei, welcome to the stream. How are you today? How are you tonight? You're just in time. I'm with my friend here, Luke Zhao, who is the host of the podcast. Um, do you have a name for this podcast, by the way? It's Hell Talk. Hell Talk. <laughs> Hosted once a week whenever I have a day off and the time is always set by the guest. Any mm -hmm. question I make is completely vetoable by the guest only. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And thanks again for having me on your show. Oh, it's no problem. I plan to have all my friends on and invite randoms. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, accents and stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but I do have a similar story, just with the opposite tone. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Because, like, as a, per as a person of color, uh, with the whitest frick voice <laughs> on Discord, I talk... Uh, I had friends that I never revealed this to because I wasn't paying attention about it at all. So uh, we were just in a Discord call at one point, and I was like, oh, wait, you guys think I'm white? I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Uh, I'm actually black. You're like, wait, no, 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 no. You, ha you have to prove that. Show us your hand. Come on. That's... Hand picks right now. Oh, fuck, And man. I do it. And I do it, and they're like, yo, can we have the inward pass? What the fuck? Who asks that? <laughs> I, I'm legit surprised. Like, are these fucking two? Are these are like twelve year olds? Who asks that shit? That's so fucking dumb. <laughs> I'm I'm legit surprised for you. Age. That's so fucking I stupid. Was almost twenty. They are the same. What the fuck? I I'm I feel bad for even think. I can't even. I, I'm shocked, dude. That's 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 a. There's some I. I cannot use. There's some language I cannot use on Twitch. <laughs> they weren't being serious, but it was like that was their instant joke reaction. <laughs> what the fuck? This is why I don't even assume shit. I try not to assume shit unless I am certain, and I'm only ever certain about fellow Southeast Asians. I do not assume any other race for that exact reason. It's just dumb. You never know. You don't. You don't know what the fuck someone is behind an avatar, do you? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. I would have known that I'm not that I do not actually have a vagina. <laughs> I could have been she her this entire time and you never would have known. <laughs> I just like you <laughs> fucking die. <laughs> I did not I... It was like straight up no audio came through. <laughs> I, I'm a lost war. I don't even. Know. I don't. I. I need to fucking drink. I got some. I got some gamer juice here. Emphasis on the gay part of the merch. Where the fuck did I put it? There it is. I need to power up the quick one second. But, uh, not monster energy drink, but uh, that um, that American, American, uh, American energy drink I posted on Twitter the other uh, yesterday. Bang. Mountain Dew. No, it's bang. Um, oh. As a competitor with Rain, that basically that whole class of energy drinks that is calorieless. I used to chug these things like three times a day, two times a day, but Are I started insane? getting. Huh? Are you insane? Um, no, but I did. I um, had no regard for my health and happiness and did not understand one, until too late one that. thing uh, is already above your. Uh, recommended intake of caffeine. 300 milligrams each per can. Yes. And uh, these things cause severe anxiety. So if you have anxiety, solar anxiety issue, I actually, I actually did this with some friends where I'm like, I had a friend, they're regularly here in the stream too, that used to have serious, severe anxiety issues. And I was talking with them about ways to help them out with that. And I was like, so you drink Monster also? And they're like, yeah, I go through a lot. I have a budget for this. I go through like three, literally three or four a day. And I'm like, do you realize that uh, energy drinks actually cause severe anxiety? 
when they're abused and they're like oh <laughs> and i've seen this with other people too um i used to monster energy drink used to react the worst with me i used to have such problems with that not to mention three it was like what 300 calories a can or some shit like that so it's not good for dieting either but i digress Yo, I finally got that diet monster. Yeah. Dude, I have so much fucking energy right now. Diet monster. I'm getting all of the benefits. Mmm, guarana, taurine, preservatives, sodium benzoate. Actually, sodium benzoate I think is okay with you, but eh. Yeah. Honestly, you turn into a robot, so I didn't understand a lick of what you just said. Just as planned. All according to Kikaku. Who the fuck is Kikaku? Kikaku means plan. Ah. <laughs> not what to be fuck? not to be confused with Kohaku or Kikashi. Past robot. Hello, how's your day popping? <laughs> I pre What? I am sorry, I can't English today. Let me uh actually show Azal once again in chat. I'm also going to go they ahead. Uh, oh, I think this is in response to their energy drink. They put like a rainbow tea mm -hmm. emoji. I'm also Which, going yeah, that's, to. That's fair. That's valid. Also, go ahead. Went ahead and link that as well. So I did not set any of these things to automatically play in Nightbot. I'm so sorry, lovely people, for the mic poop. There is mic poop just now. Oh, it's LGBT. Uh, what did you think it was? It was this a ra Listen, I don't associate every rainbow with the. Okay. Is that what that is? Oh, it's a pride tea. I thought it was just tea that happened to be colored pro or colored uh, rainbow. Well, I I was about to call. Yeah, it's pride like, a color I prefer just now. rainbow tea is what I said. It's like they corrected me saying it's LGBT. Ha ha. <laughs> that's the emote. The price is right. They, that's what they said. <laughs> Which, yeah, that's how I was thinking the emote. I do not know how I personally feel about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know why I feel weird about that. Either way, <laughs> now my brain is off, is off the chemicals, and I need to get it back on it. <laughs> Excuse me while I capture my brain again. Yeah, take Let me get under this desk. Yeah. Dude, I... I'm just I breaked my avatar in the correct position. This is an extremely perfect... Nice. Nice. It actually looks like I'm trying to find something. How dare you, VC face, try to fix the position? I will have your uh, phone number by the end of tomorrow. VC Face does have an issue where sometimes if you turn away from the camera and turn back, it starts spazzing out and pushing reset position does not fix it. So you would have to reset VC Face. I thought they fixed that in the most recent update, but they have not. It seems to be really jank. But then again, what is not? Yeah. One well, thing I like is adding like a bunch of PNGs. Uh to my avatar because like i don't know if you know this but vc face finally had the ability to have uh, pngs track you they do yeah if you uh go to props and oh that uh, thing. grab like a transparent app and look for a transparent transparent png through it you can put it and as long as you have it hovered over a body part it will track that part and stay there that's cool i think i remember attaching a uh be back soon sticky note to my face once before i had a uh before i had an afk screen that's funny <laughs> i had a really weird idea but i know for a fact i'll throw with it because that's stupid and probably against tos <laughs> Despite the fact I'm wearing clothes, I had the weird idea of putting Be Right Back nipple rings. Oh my god. That would be... It would be so funny. <laughs> but i probably get banned. Let's not get you banned today. 
no, not in the mood for that. <laughs> I still try to do the affiliate push. How much longer, or how much stuff do you have to go for affiliate? Just three average. Oh, that's always the hard part. Yes, it is. On the bright side, I'm really glad. It's, like, it's hard for me to stay on like whatever brand people think I'm on because mm -hmm. I like to bully people. But as I go on stream, I am just vibing. You could be. You know what? Fuck it. I was gonna. I was about to make a joke about bullet vibrators just now, but whatever. I couldn't work it into the joke organically enough. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is, I actually have also considered making a work Twitter account because I think the idea of having of having part of my character be kind of uh, hilarious. Mm -hmm. And also you're just safe for work me and not safe for work me and one is completely <laughs> unhinged. Like just out of nowhere I reach uh, not safe for work me just retweet quote tweets me and just send something completely not safe for work. <laughs> If that ever happens, it'll be the weirdest period of uh, my Twitter existence. Also, I actually just remember this. I don't know if you ever see this, but have you uh, ever seen a VTuber that will at, that will put like a scenario right in front of you, and they'll always same PNG every time? I don't think so. Or if I, if, or if they have, I don't recall such a situation like it doesn't happen to me anymore because like i don't interact with those vtubers that use the same png three times in a row as it personally just bothers me it's like yeah you paid for you paid for that drawing and all but it's boring it, it's just boring all right so we... i'll just be i'll just be straight up it's boring if you use great art several times in a row with a different scenario that still relates to it, but we're just looking at your button thighs and trying to pretend that we're in a not safe for work scenario. So, okay, is it like a reaction image or something, or why are they? Why it's, would they do that? So it's like, uh, first of this is one lady. Uh, it's a picture of herself. All, almost naked. She's wearing a bra, some thigh highs, panties, and you know, cute. Uh, she look, you know, she looks nice. She has the big old titties and big thighs. Mm -hmm. And her scenario was, uh, "Hey, I'm a. What would you do if you walked into this in the middle of class? If your teacher was just like this when you walked in for class? Uh... And me being an unfun, being admittedly unfunny, just responded with." Uh, uh, basically, not family, not trying to. And then they respond to me, and what is, in my opinion, the weirdest way I've ever have been responded to in my life. It is the most so. Uh, so I'm like, uh, most people that say they don't want to get into drama actually like it being a drama. It's like fair. <laughs> It's like you're not wrong. Yeah, the loudest but, people tend to be. Yeah, and I forgot the rest of it because they sent me a fucking paragraph. Mine was like a very short paragraph. They sent me a fucking thesis, <laughs> a thesis statement on Twitter, no less. Yes, they sent me a thesis sta statement oh, that essentially said like implying that I'm the asshole. I was like, okay, fine. Maybe what I said was in poor taste, but. <laughs> You didn't have to interact with it. Uh, that was, bring... I actually responded to that with, uh, uh, with confused with a confused emoji. That's <laughs> <laughs> just like, girl, what? I'm not it's, sure. I'm not. I'm not trying to be that deep here. It's people don't I'm just say an this. Funny weirdo. People don't say this phrase anymore, but I think we should bring back the word triggered because that sounds like a total trigger moment just then. It it is. <laughs> it's like yeah, fuck. I it just bothered me so much. 
bother me so much. I know I shouldn't be bothered by it, but it's like it's so confusing to me. He struck a nerve. Yeah, I was like, I was hoping that emoji would at least struck their nerve enough to elaborate. What was the offense I've made, officer? <laughs> officer, you say I made a crime, but you're not telling me what what my offense is. This is an illegal action. <laughs> Am I free to go? Am I being detained? Yeah. What's funny is I I, I was surprisingly not blocked. <laughs> because they seemed so bothered. Mm, that's the point in their favor, see... then. I feel like people abuse the block feature a little too much. Like, just the other day, I found out for the first time that I've been blocked by someone I don't interact with at all. So it must have been... And I was informed that this is thing on bird site where they pay, people basically just share lists of VTubers to block for whatever the fuck reason, and I don't know if somehow I'm on that list. It's kind of dumb, but you know what? They're lost. From what I've seen, they're kind of a drama horror anyway. Yeah. If anything, I was very surprised at how everyone acted. I was like, I never thought I would be so close to getting cancelled but this is hilarious. Because, <laughs> like, in the first ten minutes, you and Lawler were just popping off. <laughs> I mean, you and Bloody, shit. Um, when was it? It was on you... For the King. For the King. Oh, yeah. It was, like, the first fucking ten minutes of my stream. It was like, uh, we were <laughs> shitting on women. <laughs> It exists. It exists in all bird sight communities. Okay, so this is just a common thing in bird sight then. What's bird sight? Uh, bird sight Twitter. Basil was saying that block lists are apparently a very common thing, and could I go through Twitter or whatever? Now there is such thing as uh, there's a bot that someone developed that will block that people use to block everyone that follows you. Hmm. <laughs> Like, that's for them, not you block everyone that follows you. It's just they block you and it follows everyone else. I mean, it also blocks everyone else that also follows you. Damn, that's kind of messed up. If that's the case, then I could probably see how I got blocked. There are some people I follow that some people might find controversial or heavily dislike for one reason or another. But I still think that's a dumb reason to block anyone. I wouldn't be, surpri I wouldn't be surprised if I'm on a blacklist for following. Following. Um... Nux. Oh. Oh, NUX. because of the Nux drama. Yeah, it's like, and I will be, I am very outspoken. I I talked about this with Lawler. No, I, why do I keep saying your name when I mean bloody fuck? <laughs> Why are you both mold into my mind? And before we're You're actually not the, the same, same person. fucking person. <laughs> one of you likes WWE. The other person, I have not had a one-on-one -on -one conversation offline. That is concerning. Either way, <laughs> regard regardless, I have made my opinions on that drama so vo uh, very vocal on this podcast with bloody. Because like yeah, Bloody was taking the safe route. It's like, well, we don't know enough information. It's like, in my opinion, we have enough. Information. There's like enough stuff for at least me to say this is fucking disgusting, and I do not like the actions of V Shoujo and the V Sojo girls. I think I subsequently, to. yeah, and I subsequently stopped watching a lot of their content except for Iron Mouse because she's the only one that. Went above and be fuck above and fucking beyond to try to make things right. Iron Mass is such a sweetheart, I swear to God. Yeah, I was like, I I didn't expect much for everyone to do because they kind of, a lot of them do seem a bit catty, <laughs> like ignoring their outward personalities when you actually observe, try to psychoanalyze their subtle things. They do kind of seem like the same people that be catty. To be honest, the only people in V Shoujo I even know are Project Melody, but she started off on Tra Chatterbait, Iron Mouse, who I read the backstory, or who I didn't realize about her backstory, about her being mostly disabled, or so more or less, 
or being extremely ill. So I thought that was kind of cool that she does VTubing and all this stuff, even in spite of that, which is very inspiring. She used to stream in front of like two people with a completely different avatar that was still called Iron Mouse. Huh? It was just an adorable, it was just an adorable, almost chibi like character. <laughs> and I still remember the, because this is actually how I was introduced to Iron Mouse, <laughs> where she, she finished uh, the KFC dating game. <laughs> and she was talking about the uh the love between her and uh Colonel Sanders talking about how passionate their love was. <laughs> and that was I thought that was fucking hilarious. And then I watched more of their clips and it was like this person's a fucking gremlin. I fucking vibe with this. And the last person is Fruit, who I knew before she became a VTuber, back when she was just called BS Apricot, and she was really fond of drawing Ghost Frontline fan art. They seem like they uh, seemed like a pretty chill person, at least from my very few interactions in Discord. But I don't really watch their I don't really watch a lot of the big VTubers content. I mostly watch indie people, believe it or not. So to give you the full roster of the current V because I don't even know about the new generation. Uh, uh, just to let you know. Project you're... Melody, Iron Mouse, Centrea, Fruit Abricot, uh, Silver Veil, Silver Veil, uh, Hijay Hajime, and I think that's it. Pe wow. Some people count. Uh, what's her name? Snuffy. Yeah, Snuffy. I don't know any uh, of these people. As a Viso Juggle, <laughs> despite the fact she's she's just an independent that re that hangs out with them a lot. Hmm. Uh, is Vebe part of that group too, or is she her own thing? Oh yeah, Vebe too. There we go. I knew I was forgetting something. Yeah, I think Vebe is the only other person whose name I recognize, not because I knew them before, but only because I see a lot of their content turned into memes on YouTube. The other girls, I, I have no idea who they are. I do feel bad for all of the girls, because like, the popular clips of them are just of them being jokefully horny. And it's like, I know that's not how they want people to come in their streams thinking that it's just discount chatterbait. Come to think of it, I hear something. I'm still here. Okay, good. What's wrong? Did my voice cut out or something? You were just like super silent for a second. I was like, uh, am nope. I alone? I'm still here. Okay. And it's just like, I do feel bad for VTubers that just get clipped for being horny all the time. Because, because like, smart. obviously people... Because, yeah, obviously they do brand themselves as not safe for work VTubers. Obviously do make those types of jokes all the time. But that's not all their stream is. It's, once again, like any other part of the entertainment industry, once you go the lewd route, people, real, people tend to just see you forever as either the porn star, a former former porn star, or the former lewd tuber, or all kinds of stuff. Which is kind of sad, but I guess kind of comes with the territory, mm -hmm. really. Like, I also feel like some, uh, like a lot of lewd tubers that are getting like bigger, I think a lot of them are starting to be seen in the same vein as like Visojo lights. Hmm. Because even my brain subconsciously thinks uh, you kind of cut out after you said your brain subconsciously thinks. My brain subconsciously thinks like, wait, did I just miss, a, miss the announcement for the next generation of Visojo? <laughs> because like these girls just feel like they fit into the Visojo friend group so perfectly. Like the same sort of flavor, basically? Yeah, because I, they're either horny or they're really just gremlin-like people. As like, the way I only see Visojo is like they hire horny or gremlins. It is kind of their brand when you think about it, or at least how they started. Zentreya is the only one that's not horny. <laughs> Like, I didn't even know that Nichi Sanji was a separate VTuber group for a little bit until I started seeing all the drama between them and Hololive. I just assumed that they were another Hololive because they kind of have similar content, I guess. I don't know. I don't watch the big tubers that So much. the big difference between Ninji Sanji and Hololive, Hololive is a virtual idol company, while Ninji Sanji 
advertises itself as a, a stream a, a streamer content creation company company they want you to see their talent as streamers and not as idols i mean which is why like alexium uh, hmm. and lazulite are okay to talk about any not safe for work topics and niji sanji that that's those are the those are the generation names of the Ninji Sanji. Yeah. Oh, Luxium and Lazulite. Okay, I see. Yeah, Lazulite, if I remember correctly, is the first generation Ninji Sanji EN. Because believe it or not, Ninji Sanji has been having a lot of trouble trying to plan their way into the EN market because all of their fans want it. Because their one of their pop was pop one of their popular talents is Hanamakia, a member of uh, Nindi Sanji I, uh, Indonesia, but she mostly speaks English in her streams, and the the meme with her channel is that like it's just Nindi Sanji E and solo. And that's and, kind of insulting. And it's like she she's not bothered by that. It's a meme. She, I think it's a meme that she even she perpetuates. But she would never. But she's made several statements that she would never join EN. She loves ID uh, too much to leave them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she also. Per, she also. Her father also participates. Really, it's always good. Ironically, to see. her funniest stream was when her dad was there to fuck with her, like live on stream. Yes, because it's just straight up. Uh, like imagine like a good dad, a generic good dad that's not too uh, clingy, overbearing, or just not a bad father. <laughs> they're just chill, and they're a gamer dad. Ooh, yeah. Uh, that's the kind of guy he is. That's the kind of dad he is, and he messes with her all the time. Uh, if I remember correctly, he actually said how he got to video games was that he'd uh, grab his daughter, put, uh, sit her on the couch, and he sits on the floor, play, and he's just playing Doom. And that's cute. And, uh, and pretends to ignore her, so she would be interested in it. Aww. Yeah. Gamer dad. That's the best strategy for, if you are, if you're gonna be a father someday, do this. If you want to get your daughter into video games, I think I do. Would, she I said would it was like, very effective. I would like to have kids in the future if possible, so I'll have to keep that in mind. Yeah, it's all about the imagery. I just like to imagine a little kid looks. Uh, oh my! I just imagine a little baby watching their father just slice demons in half and do <laughs> it turn the whole. Well, the main theme plays. Dun, 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 dun. I can't do the beat, but everyone gets the point. All they fear is you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Actually, was that the actual name of it? I could have sworn it was the only thing they fear is you. I think that might be the name of the theme, actually, but I could be wrong. I have not finished. Um, it was like June something. 2016. It was like something. Something. The fear is. Uh, is you it's definitely all they fear is you because that's like the part of the lore where the demons are only scared of you because you're literally the same doom guy as the doom you're, the doom slayer is the same person as the doom guy from the original doom games yep basically it's literally the same person because there's a lot of internet interdimensional multiversal fuckery in the doom series basically there's this one person that made like a 15 minute animation about the first Doom game, not the mm -hmm. first first game game, but Doom 2016. Mm -hmm. And one of the jokes was like, "Shut the fuck up, Private. Be glad that we even have a story. Be glad that they even have a what? Be glad that this game even has a fucking story in it. <laughs> story. Yeah, because uh... like not a single Doom game before that actually had a. Uh, actual story outside like, of killing the story demons, was yeah. like told in loading in loading screens with text mm -hmm. and it's vaguely a story 
Hey, Sorobot says it's the only thing they fear is you. Apparently. That makes that okay. rings. That rings a lot better, yeah. That's fair. I used to listen to that song all the time in my car. And when it gets to the and it and the fucking shit drops, I accept, I put my foot on the gut and fucking accelerate. I I am about I'm zooming. Uh, I got the fucking soundtrack playing in my head right now. It's so it's so <laughs> memorable. It okay. is so memorable. Do you know that's do you know that I remember correctly that actually the soundtrack has been the same the entire time in terms of beat. Uh, it's actually fairly common in video correctly. games where they just take the theme song and they just change it according to the situation. Yeah, it's like it used to be an eight bit version and now they in sixteen they made like a pretty okay version. And then eternal it's just like ramped up to a million like doom 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 doom. Mm-hmm. It's like unironically, that is my one of my uh metalheads described it as like this is the uh song that gets people into metal. Pretty much that or listening to GG Str- or to Guilty Gear Strive's soundtrack. Also gets people into metal. Did you know that the composer for Doom Eternal and Doom 2016 is a VTuber S-word? Are you shitting me? Really? I am not shitting you, dude. Um, We're talking about the guy that recently got ass-blasted for some drama for he, or from for some drama or something on social media, right? Something about screwing up a uh, soundtrack or something? Or a... Uh, Special edition soundtrack or something like that? Or is this someone else? I'm talking about Doom, so... Hmm. The the Doom composer. That's cool. I wonder who he... Uh, Crustaceans for. Name. I'm forgetting his name, too, but... I remember, like, because he came into a VTuber's chat, I was like, uh, he, he said a thing. Everybody chat on this VTuber for not knowing who the fuck he was. Pacel Robot says like it's Mike Gordon. God. What? Uh, Pacel Robot says it's his name is Mike Gordon. Yeah, Mike Gordon, that was it. Hell, I didn't know who Mike Gordon was until the drama blew up on social media either. <laughs> not gonna lie. I don't know what drama you're talking about. Um, yeah, some stupid thing. It's not in my drama circles. <laughs> Eh, it's not worth remembering. Don't worry about it. His music's great, regardless. Yeah. I have a I, have I was concerned that you were going to say that he's a homo. Oh, no, 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 no. It was nothing like that. It was, like I said, it was some really petty drama that he was, I think he was rightfully... Why is des- Xbox giving me free $5? That's pretty fucking dope. $5? Probably for those $5 footlongs that don't exist anymore. <laughs> Uh, I have. I'm kind we of recently curious, bought though. some. I would like to apologize for the five dollar foot long you bought one time. So I do have. I am kind of curious about this. Um, uh, I noticed that a certain word which rhymes with pimple is people are dancing around the word anytime it comes up in a stream. Is this like a bannable phrase along with a certain R word and another R word and other words? Can you just type those out? Because I do not know what you're talking about. Pimple. Um, Ace has. Spelled it out as S one M P. Oh yeah, it's now bannable. It's been bannable since twenty nineteen. Why is it bannable? Because is mods it... were called that word. Amazon fucking Twitch, Twitch mods. Twitch is the ultimate over... Twitch mods. Twitch is so all over the place with how it regulates itself, but eh, it's whatever. At least consistent. Yeah, I guess it is pretty consistent. Nowadays. I mean, and this was like back before I became part, became a VTuber. I always thought it was kind of strange watching from the outside in. And I was always kind of found, back then, not, not knowing what I know now about how the Twitch community mostly works, Um, it's always seemed strange watching just the absurdity with how it was modded, like... That one woman or whatever that um spread spread her assets among other things live on camera and she only got suspended for three days, while another person 
had their Cyberpunk 77 game glitch out on them and they got permabanned, which is the reason why I don't stream Cyberpunk 77. But, I don't know, it always seemed very arbitrary. I feel like you should try it again in, like, maybe four months from now. I feel like maybe there won't be that glitch. I mean, the game is pretty stable right now. It doesn't do the clothing glitch anymore, and even okay, it doesn't do the clothing glitch. I don't, I don't know too much about its patch notes. It's where it is right now. Uh, Cyberpunk seventy seven is both playable and I would say decent. It's still not the messiah of games that it was marketed to be, but it's at least at a point where it's at the point where it should have been on release, basically. <laughs> but and also the modding community is going going really going places but still um that kind of freaked me out you know, at the time i always thought with like games getting so high fidelity moz would be churning out like super slow yeah because I mean, most mods do try to copy the same graphic fidelity the game they're in Mm-hmm. Like, I see there's always going to be the Thomas the Tank Engine mod that doesn't <laughs> use high-res textures, but it's a meme mod, so who the fuck gives a shit? If anything, it would contribute to the memeiness by being a low resolution while everything else is in 4K or 9K. Exactly. Or whatever the fuck K they're using nowadays. Pace the Robot says uh, it's Mick Gordon, can't... not Mike Gordon. The max K you can get a game at right now is 8K, and right now, no one would recommend you to do Cyberpunk at 8K. That's stupid. You mean unless you not, got money there's to not, not that not even the most top of the line top of the line software can do that at eight at, can do that at a consistent sixty FPS with ray tracing on. Oh dear. But can it run? Because Lioness Tech Tips actually did that. But the new demo for Crisis is even worse. There's a wait. What do you mean new demo for Crisis? There. Okay, so they're remastering Crisis one. What the fuck? Yes, and they released a demo for it. And it's so high fidelity that a 3090 is going 30 FPS. Wow. When you turn ray tracing on. Off, it's 60. I can't wait for the 6090 Ti to come out so we can finally play Crisis on low settings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Aislinn, I mean... It's like the 30s, the 30 series GP. It's like, I will never understand the point of Crisis's, Crisis's existence other than as a benchmark tool. We were actually discussing this last night. Apparently it has to do with, at the time the Crisis was first developed, the developers had were really optimistic about when what hardware would be what i can't fucking talk what hardware would be capable of 10 years later and 10 years later said hardware has not materialized and is in fact capped way below what they expected or something like that mm-hmm. so it really is just a benchmarking tool yeah because like i was actually so there's a vtuber named chamomile and they are a part-time developer they're just learning how to do game development Woo. And they're really passionate about it. And uh, I was talking to them about, I was in their chat talking about like, Crisis just looks like, just seems to be a benchmarking thing. It's like, cri- they agreed with Crisis 1, but Crisis 2 through 3, focus- uh, she felt that focused more on the story than the graphics. There's a story to Crisis? There is a story to Crisis. <laughs> Crisis 2. The guy from Crisis 1 is dying, so he gives you his armor. The armor is sentient, so you have to form your bond with the armor and give it your full trust. By the way, you're a member of the U.S. Marines, but because you're in that armor, the Marines do not recognize you. You are essentially a Marine killing Marines because the Marines are shooting at you. So the armor is sentient? You see, at the time, I just thought it was Halo. No, it is perfectly sentient. Huh, that's interesting. Because it, the AI uh, get gets sassy with you. <laughs> I specifically remember me try me cursing out the AI for being a cunt. <laughs> that that's one of the few things I remember from Crisis. It's a very freaking 
game franchise, in my opinion. I'm starting it's to only miss perfect. FPS games. Huh? I'm starting to miss FPS games. It's funny that you say that, considering that FPS games cost, are constantly releasing. Uh, wait, what? FPS games, they're constantly releasing. Okay, allow, allow me to rephrase that. Uh, I miss good <laughs> FPS games that are not Battle Royales. There we go. That are not COD. That are not Battlefields. <laughs> that are not hero shooters. And I thought the hero shooter There's, trend had finally been killed. Uh, do you play Polygon? What's Polygon? Uh, it's an FPS game that really... It's free. I've it's not a Battle this. Royale. Uh, if you played Battlefield, you've played this. The only dif- the main difference is, is that there's no vehicles, and you can't switch your guns mid-game. So basically, you have to... Yeah, once you actually buy more guns, uh, you're married to that gun for all, however long you stay into that uh, session. Be and also maps do not there's no map rotation so you're always in that same map unless you leave and then choose a different server to come in that's running a different map. Interesting. <clears throat> it sounds like the anti FPS game. The thing is that's like super fucking fun. I what? the developer is like I it's really it's an unfinished gem is how I look at it. What kind of FPS is it? Is it uh is it like a Quake style hyper No is it a Twitch it's shooter? Slow. Is it... It's slow. It's hmm. not super slow, but it's like mid speed, really. How's the TTK? Because you only have what's a TTK? Time to kill. Uh only a few seconds really. Oh, so it's like Halo then. It's not like a mi- it's not like a minute like some games, but it's like You'll get a kill in a few few seconds because the maps aren't huge, but they but some maps are like uh, mid size as well. Some maps are small, hmm. and they can and no matter what, all maps are can be thirty two players. Oh, I mean, time to kill is not like time before you get your first kill. It's how long does it take if you how long does it take to kill someone when you unload into them, basically. Like, for example, COD uh, would be the lowest, Counter-Strike would be around mid, and Halo would be c- considered a long time to kill. And then T- TFT was also pretty long, pretty high. So, two sniper body shots kill someone. Oh, okay. Uh, An AK-12, it's like less a quarter of a second. Hmm. So it's definitely not an insta give game. That's interesting. Yeah, it's like, it's pretty quick. You're pretty quick to die. You're not that fast moving, but you are quick to die. Hmm. So yeah, I didn't know Polygon was a thing until you just mentioned it. Yeah, it's like free. I love playing it. Uh, when, for some reason, Rainbow Six Vegas 2 did not want to work uh, really? on stream last, yesterday, I just went to Polygon instead. <laughs> I was like, I recently bought the sniper, and I've been fucking popping off with the sniper. For some reason, I can't work with the assault rifles. But if I'm staying in a corner, supporting the boys from the back lines, I am popping. <laughs> Everyone, needs also don't... Hmm? Everyone needs their niche. Everyone needs their niche. Yeah. I will never understand like how an actual battlefield... People will stay like all the way back at spawn, stay at the highest point, and expect to get a kill by seeing two fucking pixels move. Twitch shooters, man. It's just that's just how they are. Me, I get fucking bored doing that sort of camp style gameplay. I need to be moving around. Or For I... me, I love it because like being a snipe the maps are small enough that being a sniper there's always a risk in staying in one place because everyone that you kill already knows where you are. Because Uh, it copies the battlefield style of being (laughs) killed. You pretty much have to keep moving after you take a shot and whether you got someone or not. Well, you could just stay there if you have someone behind you. Mm -hmm. 
The only problem is like if that person you just killed is a sniper, then you actually have to because they're not gonna forget it. And <laughs> they now have a personal vendetta against you. There can you only be shit one on their Cheerios. Now those shit on your frosted flakes. I almost bought frosted flakes today. Why didn't you? Uh I don't want to buy rice milk. <laughs> I, I am lactose intolerant, uh, so I have to buy rice. Oh. Mildly lactose intolerant. I just can't have milk. And yeah, that's that's the fun thing about my disease. Mm. My disease gave me lactose intolerance, but for some reason, uh, the only thing I'm actually truly allergic to is milk, because it makes me hallucinate. Hold the fuck up. Milk makes you hallucinate? Yep. Whoa, and I thought lactose intolerance just gave people to runny shits. I didn't realize it could do, like, other stuff. Or is this unrelated to lactose intolerance? Allerg allerg allergies can give you whatever... If but it's always a debuff. So it's like a legit allergy as opposed to... Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah, because like, I remember they allergy tested me because they thought I was insane. So they just wanted to make sure it wasn't just related to allergies. And I'm just, meh. So uh, I had a extreme reaction to when I was shot up with milk. Damn. I straight up uh, saw, like, black creatures. Uh, uh, you know Ruby, right? Uh, from Ruby the Monty Um show? Yeah. Uh, they, they straight up just look like Beowulves without the white shit. Damn, you were tripping balls. I'm milk no less. But, <laughs> what they did was take my brother, but when I left, what, what they did at that point was kneel to me. <laughs> Because I, the whole time, I was just repeating to myself, it's not real, it's not real. I am in the doctor's office right now. Tristan was not taken. Oof. And I guess that was enough to give it. And hey, here's a reward of seeing your enemies literally kneel before you, the pathetic plebeians. <laughs> in most literal form possible. Exactly. By the way, do you have any special projects you're thinking of doing? Uh, quite a few, actually. The main one that's currently in the back burner, if only because I have not spent... I need to spend more time into... I need to spend time into forming it up. It's just that um, creative writing as a whole is a very time-consuming process and preparation more so. Um, last month, I kind of opened the idea of... on tw On Twitter of uh, possibly doing a writer collab and to my surprise i actually got responses by from around a dozen people or so so i made a google form for some people to, to fill out and we made a server for a future writing collab of some dax, kind stop being a fucking wholesome friend me wholesome dax not you <laughs> i saw his tweet on i saw what he did he retweeted my post he quote tweeted actually Said, hey, stop what you're doing. Go watch this VTuber right now. <laughs> it's like, fuck you for being wholesome. Imagine being wholesome. Couldn't be us. I need to make him the next guest because I keep forgetting to watch my podcast. <laughs> He's also a really late streamer. He only can like stream eight, at 8 p.m. CST. I used to stream at that time. But it was getting... Yeah. A little too late for me, so I had to move it up to like right after work. Yeah. For me, I am currently working on a uh, a few comics, actually. Really? Yep. Uh, one of them is actually being made, and it was actually a previous comic because I literally actually have experience doing this at all. So it was just a little writing exercise hmm. it's with it's a comment about me and i uh i am it and 
I'm teaching them demon magic. I see. I'm trying to find it on my phone right now because I was actually going to send it to you. Because like, oh, you're writing something. Let me just flux my my project on you. <laughs> Let me just do do that. Oh wait, I forgot. My phone fucked up and deleted all of those pictures, but it rip. My artist still has those. Rip. So I'll just show you the ones that are finished. Is this the fixed one? That might be the fixed one. Yeah, that's the fixed one. Wait, did I seriously not download that picture? <laughs> I'm downloading that picture right the fuck now. Right the fuck now. I didn't now. download the other one. Yeah, it was like... Uh, <laughs> I... I expected it to take a while. I just didn't know how long it would take and what speed they would be going at. But it's essentially... They are fast when it comes to sketches. Mm -hmm. They came at me with like two fucking pages per week. And at one week it was three pages because I paid them off fully. Are they a Fiverr uh, artist or a VTuber or a friend of yours or? Uh, I say neither. They they're quite literally just a Twitter artist I found one day, and I was like, "That style looks dope. Let me pay them to be my entire brand." <laughs> hey, if the shoe fits. Yeah, I think I sent that and you sent that to you in order. Those are the three finished pages. Nice. Yeah. And there's like three different comic series I'm writing all about like the same universe really. Mm -hmm. Two of them are Zhao and the other one's the female character Tracy Lee. And all of them are basically centered around the theme of and uh, Zhao is like how far would you go as a person uh, to find your lost family member, the only person that you know that you consider family? Mm -hmm. I don't consider this part a spoiler, but he's been spending, he spent 200 years looking for his sister, and the only 100, uh, he's only been keeping, been slightly putting it, that search on the back burner because he became uh, the Sin Wrath. Mm hmm. So, uh, he's like, I'm debating like how, if I should still consider Zhao with uh, a wrath in training or just wrath, and he's just having to do uh, a certain training. Because I do want to do a training uh, comic, but I do not know mechanically how I'm going to write that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because Zhao, he is heavily themed around ancient China. I see. Despite the fact he wears modern clothes. And he actually goes as far as to say, I only like the aesthetic of China. Despite it being my second home country, I, do, uh, I no longer consider that to be my home. The living world is not my home anymore. Nowhere it is. So is he himself Chinese or...? He's actually Chinese American. Oh, okay, Chinese American. Yeah, he was born in America, and his family uh, left, fled to China. Interesting. Due to uh, debts, so they spent a very long <laughs> six month. Actually, that's probably a year and a half voyage. Actually, when you think about it, depending on what port would actually be best to get to China. Hmm. Shanghai the point probably. is somehow their family got to China. It's like the the past itself is actually not going to be too. Fast. Because it's just like uh, the uh, Zhao's struggle to find their uh, sister is the only thing that's supposed to be the most relatable about Zhao. The desire to find the only person person he considers family. 
because uh, Zhao, both Zhao and Tracy are fundamentally just followers. Just followers, uh, you said? Like, no, monsters. Oh, monsters. Because they all, all, they'll act really nice, nice around people. They will act like a normal person, but the moment they see an angel, they'll go ape shit. <laughs> They both take extreme pleasure in toying with angels. And how angels work mentally is that they're pompous assholes. Because like when you think about it, what would you really be acting like if you became an if you died and you were an angel? Especially if you were a Christian that died and turned into an angel and you see D. Could you say you would treat them with any mercy or even think of them as human? Well, if we were to go towards the uh, stereotypical mythology, they would consider themselves e each other natural enemies. So I wouldn't say, you know. Yeah, so the, uh, back, the back theme is that, like, despite the fact demons are, act are militaristically either the, are, like, almost the same, if not smarter than angels, the angels are very prideful and er and arrogant because they essentially were born into a better position mm -hmm. than demons. Even though demons, like social demon society, is not lower. In demon society, they functionally have the same same everything. Uh, they the only difference is where they come from. And the lies that some, uh, somebody wrote in the book. Uh, that that's also something that's going to be revealed. I shouldn't say revealed because it's not really revealed. It's just more of like to demons. It's a stated fact that the Bible is uh, filled with constant lies and defamation. Actually, that would be a libel because it's written. But I guess you could say it's like it's the story is uh, the backstory is racism, but it's I'll, I'll probably get flagged for not focusing on the race card too much because mm. for some reason writers get flagged for putting for putting what's a natural result of their world and not focusing on that aspect mostly, even though to the character racism isn't the pro uh, isn't what he cares about. It's the simple fact that he's being looked down upon. So, he, uh, what... Jower refuses to be seen as lower when he knows he's better. That sounds less like racism and more like a class issue. You know, it's more, it's more classism. But it's like the moment you put classism, it's still racism to most people. That's true. I guess. I always felt like people, for some reason, find it easier to believe that all of the various races are inherently at each other's throats, but hard to believe that the rich people are screwing us over for pennies on the dollar. Yeah. Just in general, it's always, I don't know why it is, at least in the States, it feels like it's politically easier to to push one narrative as opposed to another. I mean, they both suck, except, you know, it doesn't matter what your skin color is you could still be rich and still be an asshole i i personally think that's everywhere yeah that's true people believe like i've interacted with people had come up uh, actually come up to me uh in in discord and tell me you know america's the worst you know it's the worst country to ever exist because this this and that and i just go like your country has all of those. It's just not reported on it as often. Not to mention... In fact, if I look it up right now, your country has the worst in comparison. I also feel like I actually become more appreciative without having to be a nationalist for living in the United States for a whole host of other reasons. Uh, comparing exactly. my, comparing the, our country to the Philippines, where my parents are from, to... Even countries within the European Union or even to places like Australia, other first world nations that people think are the same, if not better, than the United States, 
Um, it's really yeah. just a matter of grass screener. I used to have a friend that used to go off all the time about how Russia is better than the States. And I'm like, you know, in Russia being the murder capital of the world. Well, even before that, Russian or Russia as a culture does not like LGBT people, right? And you being a trans person would not last even a day there without being lynched, so to speak. <clears throat> Just Do little things like that. Negatively? Uh, Slavic or Russian culture as a Russia as a culture. No, no, I was talking about like the trans person reacting negatively. The trans person, in in their in fairness, they do have a tendency to exaggerate things and to pull bullshit mm -hmm. comparisons out of their ass. They used to go off all the time about how living in America is hell, Russia is so much better. I don't know why they chose to use Russia as an example, because there are so many other countries they could have used which would be better comparisons, like Norway. Yeah, like Norway. What, London be better? Uh... For... A better uh, example for LGBT friendly? For LGBT friendly, maybe I'm not so sure. I mean, like that's the only angle I'm talking talking about because, like, I don't know the political, the social political structure of every country under the. I'm not. I mean, when it comes to it's for when we're talking about strictly about trans rights, I'm not. I can't. I don't know enough to decide what the other country would have superior. Superior that trans we have, rights compared to the states. Uh, trans rights, I am pretty sure Britain would copy and paste it. You would think we're pretty. That. Britain is pretty westernized. I'm just thinking. I just can't get over the fact that in Great Britain they freak the fuck out if you have a kitchen, if you have a butter knife in your house, stuff like that. <laughs> is just and other things uh, too, like um, I don't know. That, but I think. Uh, and this is the way British YouTubers talk about it. That's actually an exaggeration, but they will have a big. But if you have like a big knife in your kitchen, my mom she has s several knives, and one of them's like a huge fucking knife. And anytime I think a burglar comes in because I don't know where the family gun, I pull out that knife. <laughs> that knife is a foot long, dude. Sounds like a machete. Straight up a full twelve. Is that a machete? It might as well be. It might as might as well be a, a machete. After all, machetes are decided by length, not style. Just like a, I don't know if you know this. I only know this because like, there's so many YouTubers, uh, talking about gun politics, uh, mm -hmm. and some of them just don't know what they're talking about. Most uh, of them don't. There are pistols. That look like rifles, but because they're just an inch shorter than a typical rifle length, they're considered a sidearm and not a uh, primary firearm. Oh, I'm aware of this drama. That's so, there's a lot of ATF anti-ATF anti memes that are about this sort of thing. Uh, weird yeah. definitions like what is considered a short-barreled firearm and all that good stuff. And it's like, I do agree with it's like, yeah. We, you don't need a fucking machine gun drum to go hunting. But what if we were to revolutionize against our government? Government, In my opinion, that's the reason why we have the right to arms. It is kind of the original purpose, without getting into gun politics, yeah, but that is yeah, actually America. that that actually is the original repurpose of all that all the all that of those amendments. So, yeah. But... I, I believe it or not, uh, in the last podcast, I was actually arguing for a whole twenty minutes with Bloody about gun, uh, gun shit, gun control stuff. And it's like, I, I don't even tolerate the mere fantasy land idea that all of America unanimously agreed to, uh, to just give up guns. I don't even give that the uh, the mere idea of entertainment because the chances of that are so low. It will probably never happen, I would even say, in our lifetimes. Yeah, it's... within our lifetimes and the next 10 generations, that's what I personally feel. 
it's a culture it's also a, every bit a cultural thing like how there are some things in some countries that they will just never change i'm not even being it's not even a matter of being like pessimistic or optimistic it's just it's built into your dna yeah, it's guns not, it's, is now a culture in america that's what people need to get understand it's not, not just a thing people own walls of guns not even to use as defense they'll keep them unloaded without even a single bullet in them because they like the aesthetic they like the guns they like the history i mean they're just decoration too and it doesn't mean that you're to put this in context with something we all can relate to which in this case in our case would be weeb shit it's like how you see the extreme forms of weeb shit where wall to wall covered with posters and like docu like a dozen docu a dozen dockies and wall to wall anime shit. It's kind of pretty much the same thing like that. It doesn't necessarily mean that someone has a prom. It could just mean that they have a hobby and they like the hobby. So what's the problem? You yeah, would... like my sister, she wants to start a Dragon Ball anime figure collection. That's cool. Yeah. And there's one person, uh, C-Dog Via, he has a JoJo anime figure collection. And I collect... And he's slowly realizing how precious his space is turning into. That's... With how many figures he owns. That's the reason I couldn't really get into anime figures. Not only are they expensive, but they take up so much space. Instead, I collect... I also feel you run the risk of turning yourself Sorry, what did you say? You turn your you're on the risk of turning yourself into a hoarder. Oh yeah, totally. Well, that's if you don't organize them and they're just like collecting all over the place, I guess. Well, it can all it can always start as you starting to organize. It's like, well, they're starting to. I want to collect more, but I don't have space for them. It's like, but this figure is only a thousand dollars. Bye 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 bye. Like, turning into a hoarder is a gradual experience. Mm -hmm. No no one's going to realize that they're a hoarder. Even as they are, every time they step, they step onto garbage. At that point, it's when it's like, it's time to clean up. Yeah. My own room's kind of a mess, but at least it's a... Sanitary mess? Yeah. I've been in some houses that are just... They should oh. be condemned. Story of the There's one argument that almost threw the wall that, that Bloody tried to use. Uh, he said, wouldn't it be nice uh, if school shootings stopped happening in America? Well, school shootings shouldn't get, are unfortunately Wouldn't not... it be worth getting rid of all the guns just to have that to stop happen? Uh, it wouldn't stop all the school shoot. Well, it would stop the shootings, but it then would probably replace them with them. But my counterpoint mm. to that is that why do you think we now have armed cops? Why, uh, why do you like? There's a reason. Like kids do not grab guns legally. Well, also the illegal gun trade is a super huge business. I was also thinking, like, if not school shootings, we would probably have knifings. We would probably also have... Yeah, which are far less reported on. Well, I'm not even just talking about Great Britain's knife problem, which part of the reason they're so anal about knife laws is because of roving gangs of people with knives literally going around shanking the shit out of people. But... There are tragedies all over the place that mostly, largely stem from serious deficiencies in mental health in mental health services, among other things. If not guns, if someone really wants to go out of their way to cause mass harm, they will find a way. Um, like for example, uh, cars, which also became a huge problem during the George Floyd riots. Yeah. Man, it's like I think what's weird about Britain is that they just they just don't get that. Yeah, like no it's... country understands the fact uh, how to deal with mental health. Did you hear that in twenty twenty three, 
that Canada plans to legalize assisted suicide by uh, medical professionals. I'm surprised it's not legal there already. I was like, this just proves to everyone in the world that governments will much rather give their money to their militaries than even throw a penny, a fucking, they would they're not even throw a fucking penny at making more robust uh, institutions and systems to help their mentally ill become productive members of society. At 2023, I guarantee you, millions are going to die. Probably. And some of them will be Americans tran uh, transferring their legalism, uh, uh, renouncing their American lineage to uh, become Canadian yeah. to commit suicide. Yeah, their citizenship. There we go. Hey, Christian. Because, like, there's several states that just border Canada. People feel it, adults feeling depressed and have enough drive to do it, but they don't want to feel the pain. Just one little stab in the arm. I'm surprised. Uh, now I was just informed by Pastel Robot that apparently assisted suicide is actually a thing down here in the States. In a few states, I was not aware of that. I was not aware of that either. Apparently it's a thing in Oregon? They, uh, you can get assisted suicide if you diagnose uh, any form of depression-related mental illness, even anxiety. Why are people calling me? What? I guess I'll be right back because no one wants to ever respond to me. All right. See you in a bit. I went ahead and muted Luke for the time being while they complete whatever it is they need to do in the real in the meat space world. Uh, thanks once again. I do apologize for the current tone of the podcast. Let me see if we can move on to slightly uh, less depressing uh, topics for the next half an hour. I didn't actually I didn't expect. All right, one second. Welcome back, Luke. Hello. So, um, yeah, uh, moving back to, I actually forgot what it was that we were discussing earlier. It was about guns and uh, how your your opinions do not understand how gun culture work and the fact that you only increase the amount of inch. Oh wait, no, we're talking about mental health. We're I talking about we, like the assisted suicide. I think we somehow segue right into that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The uh, thing that they're doing, you can uh, in Canada in twenty twenty three, uh, you can get, uh, request assisted suicide if you suffer from any depression based mental illness, hmm. and I think even anxiety is covered under that. There's got to be more to it than that because otherwise. Um... A lot of people would be seeking assisted suicide, and I do mean a lot of people. I unironically feel that there is, knowing uh, Canada, their laws are kind of just thought of as they go. Hmm. I remember I for they made they tried making a law that they claimed that would help trans people, but even a trans person in the fucking room told them straight to their face this is going to hurt so many trans people and their freedom so what was the law if you uh, happen to know 
I can't remember exactly, but it was something to that was meant to benefit both uh, Muslim and trans and trans people. It was like an it was like an anti hate. Oh, it was like something like you can't even insult. It, it was something about anti racism or something like that. It was like so long ago. It was back when I was getting into the getting into politics. And it's like a lot of people in the right wing and skeptic communities, even on the left side, uh, were like, oh, like, what the fuck, Canada? Hmm. What what the hell? I do know this was right around when Bill Nye made his really cringe uh, gender as a spectrum statement in his show. That happened? I, just... I kind of stopped following Bill Nye after he uh, rose to prominence again just by going out of his way to shit on people, which hey, well. didn't really sit right with me. But then again, I generally don't like following provocateur people who make their personality one of just endlessly provoking people for no reason. So I kind of phased them out of my mind for a little bit. I didn't even know he did that. What? That's like his whole thing. Or became his Listen, whole shit thing, his whole thing. Only thing I knew about Bill Knight was the show where he tries to talk about uh, LGBT topics like gender and try to teach children about that sort of thing. And also, there was something kind of kind of harmful they made. It was a ice cream analogy that sounded a little rapey. Of what? <laughs> yeah, it was. I forgot the. I forgot it. Uh, and I forgot what it was, so it's definitely going to be a misquote. Mm. But uh, actually, I don't even remember. Remember, I just remember the vibe was that the rapey vibe was it. It was essentially applying that rape, rape, uh, raping people you don't understand is okay. And oh my god. Um... Oh, Somebody in the writer's room getting weird. It's very confusing. Are you going to, uh... I'm going to do it later. I told mom. She knows. Okay. When I'm when I'm done, chat chat to a friend. Still Sure, I don't care. All right. People don't like to knock in this house. Mm -hmm. Right, what was I talking about? It was something with Bill Nye. Uh, I honestly have no idea. Oh yeah, I was finishing up the i, uh, my thoughts on the how bad that ice cream thing was. But yeah, that bottom line, that uh, I was really uncomfortable. That that was weird. I'm not even trans, and that made me feel gross. But uh, that's all I know. Not about him. Just the science guy show. The weird, uh, the weird shit with that, and the fact that he went uh, to a take to TCU uh, to talk to do a talk. Like that's all I knew about Bill Nye. So you didn't grow up with Bill Nye, the science guy, and all that stuff. Uh. In terms of classrooms, yes. I used to watch that shit all the time on PBS. So hmm. it was kind of a shock when he kind of disappeared for a while. We all grew up and then he came back and his main shindig was basically provoking people online and stuff. And I just kind of phased him out, Lead, let the memories remain intact, that sort of thing. The way. I'm the science community labeled like uh, Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse Tyson is that they're scientific translators. I wouldn't even call them that. Neil deGrasse Tyson in particular, I feel like he kind of betrays his reputation for, or betrays his reputation for science with opening his mouth on things that he really should, has no stake in and shouldn't open his Ooh, mouth about. What did about? he talk about? 
I mean, I'm not going to get into any specifics now, but he has this pro or Neil deGrasse Tyson has this problem where something happens in the in the on the internet, and he feels the need to comment on it, and mm -hmm. the manner with which he comments on it has an air of smugness to it and arrogance to it, and the way he deals with criticism when people either respond negatively to his tweets or corrects him is one of someone who can't take criticism but their way of dealing with criticism is to passive aggressively insult the responders in a, such a way as to boost his own ego for um for example okay fine i will give an example <laughs> because because there's this happened unfortunately quite a few times the most recent one i remember there was yet another tragedy here in the states and he had the bright idea to, in the mid, and this literally just, and the sudden head tragedy just happened. He had the bright idea to go to Twitter and talk about how, in the grand scope of things, the deaths of these people were meaningless because people die all the time from other more likely things or more likely reasons. <clears throat> Uh -huh. Which is not wrong, but the man the timing with which he made it his to the manner with which he downplayed criticism and the manner with which he doubled down and the fact that he has this way of talking about these things in a very excessively cold, detached manner created a firestorm of lack of empathy which really if not the final nail in the coffin really did a number on his reputation and served to further overshadow his achievements his contributions to science which i think is the main problem where i almost wonder if it has something to do with the nature of social media booing boo Booey, I can't fucking pronounce this word. Um, Booing, booey. Um, basically giving people. Oh, let's let's just use the let's just use the phrase unwarranted sense of self-importance because that's what it is like. Or to use another phrase, um, not staying in your lane just because you are in most very knowledgeable and very popularized for one thing does not necessarily mean that you can or should comment on something else, much less in such a public manner, or at the very least, he could have gone about in a way that wasn't so cold. Like, I too can argue of so, how terrorist attacks are terrible, but did you know that people die in the hundreds, maybe hundreds of thousands every day from heart disease and car accidents? But there's no point to me saying this. What what is the point of me saying this during the midst of a national tragedy of which many people are literally hurting from having experience, experienced it? It's like, it's, it's, there's a time and place sort of thing, you know what I'm saying? And uh -huh. I just, and it's one thing if this happens once, it's another thing if this happens multiple times to the point where... I don't know. Well, I was told to shut up a lot growing up. It did a number of my self-esteem, but at the same time, there is a time to shut up, I guess. I don't know. I'm kind of uncomfortable discussing this. I would say there is this. a time to hold your tongue, depending on what you are going to say. Uh, I do not know what situation you're talking about, but the first thing that George Floyd. Is that the one? No, um, this was... Before George the before George Floyd, this was I don't even fucking remember. Um, I don't know. It sounds morbid, but I do have favorite tragedies based on pos positive outcomes that came from the aftermath, because people didn't fo uh, focus on just being mad about it; they were trying to fix the problem. Right. Um, that can... 
I don't know if I worded this right. But I don't know a better way to. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, point. Uh, question. What is your opinion on BLM? Uh, my opinion is not the sh- subject. Let, the organization. Should, if you don't mind, I would much prefer if we move on to Stay other away. topics. From, okay, I feel like we've. Uh, pol- uh, yeah. The uh, heavy politics has kind of run its course. Uh, let's <laughs> go ahead and enough, move enough. to something else. Okay. Okay. I had. At the beginning of this, I had like thirteen questions, but I can't remember. I remember those thirteen questions with the my... No one but me will understand what what that reference is. I have an idea of what I could be referring to, but I also hated that series. <laughs> I also hate that series for personal reasons, but I will never understand why people thought that was a good. Uh, pro mental health show i don't think it had anything to do with pro mental health i think it just had to do with it made a good show because it's a topic that people were tuned into regardless of whether they enjoyed it or not uh, the writer said it was made to spread awareness and uh make people understand mental health better i think the writer is full of shit and they were just saying that to save face and to get better marketing copy they said that's, that's the me. first season which everyone liked and then they kept saying that for every- saying like this is how people actually act. We are just giving the raw, true emotions of mental health. I don't like it when people say shit like that because the fact of the matter is, trying to it's really there's a significant amount of hubris to ever claim to speak for everyone when it comes to something like mental health. Yeah, have, did you see the school shooting episode? No, um, actually, I decided to not watch the show after all, yeah, even though I, I watched like several reviews. That's the only reason why I know about it. I was planning on reading the book, the source material, but then flipping through it, I realized that this was too toxic to even consider or spend time on because what's unfortunate is it is true that there are some people that struggle with suicidal impulses that are largely vengeful and do this sort of thing to retaliate as a form of retaliation but at the same time i get ang- get kind of upset when anyone writes something like this and claims to be the foremost knowledgeable with regard to how all people deal with suicidal impulses because not only is that absolute garbage but it's also in completely fucking insulting to anyone who may have ever experienced mental health struggles with suicidal impulses who were not chiefly vengeful towards other people nor were they sorry Lou we got to we really have to uh, switch to something else this is getting too personal yeah I just real I yeah I just realized like oh I was just is why, um, why I hate I, it. I, I apologize. I, I really don't want to discuss like, that. It's no problem. Remember, you have the power to. Yeah, have a good night, Seal. Um, let's see. What was my other que- uh, other question? Uh, oh, well, I guess considering nobody heard it, had to restart the stream. What would you say is like, like other than technical? What was there ever? A major issue you had to deal with being a VTuber? Um, a lot of the stuff, the major issues I had with, to do with, with with regard to VTubing were both prior to VTubing and also um, technical issues. The first, first and foremost, my, my view of streaming and VTubing in general was largely wrong i actually thought vtubing was more acting than it was improv i also had this i basically thought it was closer more to like tv show sort of stuff i didn't realize it was more i i didn't realize it was more it turned out to be a lot more personal than i expected when i got into vtubing i started watching streamers more often even the larger ones and i was 
surprised at some VTubers, even the larger, more popular ones, uh, larger ones with like many tens of thousands of uh, followers and many hundreds of people in chat. Some of them really do go out of their way to respond to and to acknowledge everyone in chat, which was mind-boggling to me. I was th I thought it would be more like the celebrity th celebrity thing, where you kind of start to see everyone more as a red shirt, more as like a same face a same face sort of thing. So mm -hmm. I didn't expect it to be so personal, and I got a lot of uh, prompting for VTubing from friends, some of whom are my mods and some of whom are also followers who uh, basically taught me what it taught me what it was like to be a VTuber, even if they weren't VTubers themselves. And I was really surprised by the sheer amount of collaborative effort and collaboration within the VTubing community. I was also expecting it to be more competitive, more rivalry, you know, the usual bullshit you see between Hollywood actors and actresses and whatnot. And to me, from what I've seen, that's actually more on the rare side. More people, more often than not, it almost reminds me a lot more of the open source communities and of modding communities where people are more often more liable to create stuff to uh, share with each other. And there's a lot more, it seems very easy to, if not make friends, then to make, to network, to make contacts. In some ways, it almost feels like being back in college and uh, grouping up with people to share a combined to, who have a combined interest in sharing sharing um, I don't is it sharing hobbies or something? It's like just sharing together. So mm -hmm. basically it was almost like a miniature culture shock. I'm having to readjust my approach. I'm kind of a, if you couldn't tell, I'm actually t uh, traditionally kind of a bit of a paranoid person a very i tend to be a more of a private person so mm -hmm. becoming breaking down my own barriers of being a lot more uh, a lot more what's the word i'm looking for being a lot more open with people who view my content and in general and being a lot more open on twitter as a person um was kind of a challenge for me and at the same time one that I welcome just because I acknowledge that it's probably better to be open about oneself than to be jaded and cagey about just because well to use a really cliched phrase uh, you catch more you catch more bees with honey than salt I guess or whatever the fuck um, so that was definitely a struggle and one I still struggle with today just because I do follow some certain v or certain accounts on Twitter which specialize in drama specifically just to keep abreast of the going ons in the greater VTuber community so that I know who to avoid and how not to act and how how to not how to how not to act in the um, greater greater uh, social media or greater uh, VTuber communities. Um, not to replicate or not to like spread these sort of things. Um, I have unfortunately had to, unfortunately had to a few times now either unfollow or disassociate with certain people, but some of whom I unfortunately was considering uh, friends or on friendly terms with just because they represent things that I in good conscience cannot associate with or they were, for lack of better terms, toxic in a way that I don't want to be to continue to be exposed with uh, exposed to uh, moving forward. So it's just but at the same time I don't I have not needed to twit longer anyone. I hope I never have to. There was one case where someone has the sort of drama that is definitely the kind that is dangerous to associate further with and i had no interest in blowing it up i just kind of quietly left and removed uh my existence from and or removed my existence from their spaces and kind of moved on and it sucks but i've had to do that before with in pre do that before uh, with other with other communities and that's I feel like the only compromise I can make with with, with regard to 
moving forward, but also not dragging negative excessive negativity with me. Um, so I feel like that's the hardest part of YouTubing. Ironically, I I see a lot of YouTubers who say it's tiring for them to stream. I don't I don't get tired of streaming. I actually kind of look forward to this part time job after my real time real or real life job every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So I don't mind that. Um, it's more like the trying to force myself to um, navigate the social spheres of VTubing because regard I, it is a necessity to maintain these social medias even though I don't particularly enjoy Twitter um, because or mm. particularly enjoy Twitter. I probably will never make a TikTok again though. <laughs> um, but um, oh, what, was there an explosion? Um, TikTok. I just don't like TikTok. I don't like how it's designed. I don't like what's been used and abused for. I don't like who runs TikTok and I don't I don't I I don't feel like TikTok is worth the yeah, effort. That's one thing to be owned by China was another thing that mm, well, was on there. Even if it wasn't for China, it's just the fact that it's just the reason I quit Twitter a long time ago is because Twitter used to be worse. It used to be you couldn't control the garbage that gets posted to your feed. I don't need to see Trump or anyone else, for that matter, constantly being bla paying Twitter to blast your garbage shit on my anytime I log in. It's just I and also on the reason I quit Facebook is because Facebook's algorithm and probably still is today is literally designed to force you to be angry and upset all the time so that you respond to things so that you drive up impressions and whatnot and i know twitch i know tw twitter to some extent is like that but it's so much easier to avoid that on twitter because unlike facebook you don't need to be following people and stuff but um and also like on twitter i heavily police myself uh with regard to I don't retweet certain things. I may occasionally push the like button on someone's post, but I don't retweet things to my followers because my followers don't need to know my opinions on certain things. They don't necessarily need to see it either. And same thing with mm -hmm. like, like I myself have no problem, for example, with pornographic or 18 plus or NSW content, but I, don't think that my followers need to see me or see that on their dash and they may not necessarily need to need to see meaning that may not necessarily want to see that on their vtuber accounts so i don't republish and that stuff or i try tend to avoid republishing such content on my profile same thing um so and also going back to the whole it may not seem like it sometimes but Traditionally, I tend to be a kind of person that has self-esteem issues, that struggles with um, paranoia and a, a lot of trust issues. And I, VTubing has kind of proven to be a place where I kind of try to force myself to be a better person in that regard, if only because um, I don't want to... There's a certain kind of person that I want to show to people who tune in to my content every week and I don't and I, I don't like watching this sort of thing in other people so why should I show it to other people you know what I'm saying um, <laughs> and aside from that aside from the social aspect um, the other aspect I've been having difficulties with or I struggle with is the hardware aspect um, I've been very fortunate that I could Ooh. afford to replace bits and pieces of my streaming setup. Um, I And hopefully I can quote most of that on my taxes next year. Um, the latest of which, has, the latest problem of which I've been having has been unit, a lot of my programs use Unity and Unity is notorious for uh, burning out graphics cards. I was able to largely solve the issues I had with Unity back in March by underclocking my graphics card, and just today, while waiting for you to uh, start the podcast, I was playing a little bit of Vampire Survivor with my followers, and 
I had a freeze for the first time in like a month, and it was very out of the blue. I hope it doesn't happen again, because I was playing Vampire Survivor last night with no issue, um, and even then I could always just underclock my hardware further. Worst comes to worst, I guess I'll just have to bite the bullet and find a 3080 somewhere. Or maybe pull out yeah, one for of, not thirteen thousand dollars. For not, yeah, no kidding, right? Or maybe I'll just get a another ten eighty Ti on eBay for around six hundred or something. Who knows? Oh, either way, I'm aside from that. I'm and I guess I tend. I guess my uh, I can be a rather vulgar person, but I do have to... I don't mind censoring myself for the sake of not getting canned on Twitter and Twitch. So <laughs> that's kind of a non-issue. But everything else that I kind of just rambled on about just now was pretty you much... You say that, but like Iron Mouse was straight up got into shit for just posting art? For posting art she made. What was the shit that she got into? She just... I don't know what the drawing was, but according to most people that were just screaming, it was just cute art. I think she just drew herself. There's probably people just giving her shit for the sake of giving her shit. Yeah, and it's like, like it bothered me about the fact that this bitch can't even post art with you guy without you guys getting your uh, panties in a twist. What the fuck? I mean, nah. People are always petty like that. Like the other day, Maury Calliope was getting, was having people getting angry at her for some reason, and sometimes people give. I don't remember what that reason was, even though it's like last week. I'm not gonna even bother bringing it up because it was that petty. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, so it's constantly getting more and more petty. It's just the VTubing community is getting more and more petty towards this larger creators that are doing nothing. I wouldn't even call it the VTuber community. It's just people that well i just call it like i only say it's that because it's the same people the same person that's watching mori calliope is the same person watching gora the same person watching uh takanashi kira the same person watching amelia watson they're like Mm -hmm. rather i want to admit it or not they are technically part of the vtuber community because hollow life community is technically a vtb community i mean yes but also they don't represent like the entirety of the vtuber community like I saw yeah, this. They... U- I saw this YouTube um not too long ago, and to be fair, they're one of those VTubers that has a tendency to exaggerate stuff for clickbaits. But they were like, "Oh, the NVT the NVTuber community is tearing itself apart again." Blah, 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 blah. But at the same time, it's like if I can go on Twitter and hit people po- and see people post on Twitter like, "Who the fuck is this person?" and "Why are the people angry at them?" It gives you the reminder that. Even though they're part of the community, they are not the community. The community is not, as a whole, is not suddenly dying just because people are angry with this VTuber who has... Yeah, actually, I have a good example because I'm not going to get into the drama because I actually learned about it later. Mm-hmm. But you know the uh, Shushi drama? Uh, Saroi drama, do you mean? Or... Yeah, Saroi, that was it. Yeah, um, I was following that. I was actually, I'm actually mutuals with the person, with the principal person that, um, uh, got also ended affected. up blowing up. Who was affected? Who actually blew up as a result of that? Um, so that's how I got involved. Otherwise, I didn't know who Saru Saru was before that either. <laughs> oh well, I knew who she was. I was just like never in that circle because, despite the fact I follow a few horny VTubers, I'm not part of the horny VTuber community. Yeah, me neither. Because Saraway is kind of part of them. Because uh, she has... She rivals Vebe for the amount of horny clips that show up in my timeline. Hmm. Like, I I can't say for sure the number of clips they have and who has the most. But it's like, in terms of, like, my phone's volume per horny clip of uh, Saraway and Vebe, they're rivals. Like that's all. That's all I say on that. Hmm. The Saraway thing is the only time I was like, "This isn't even a drama I care that much about," despite it being in my side of the field. It was kind of the sort of drama that's honestly 
I don't even care anymore. They kind of it was like a wet fart of a drama. It was it blew up and then went away fast. There's a lot of drama I've seen recently that is not even I would say scandalous. It's kind of high school bullshit level sort of stuff. In Sarah's well, it true. was the it's fact that, like general. Well not yes, but not I mean, I guess that's entertainment in general. I see this sort of shit pulled all the time between actors and actresses. Um, them yeah. being mad at each other for really dumb relationship shit and oh my god I just remember something hilarious <gasps> I don't know if you watched us talk you mentioned this I don't know who but... that is so okay fair enough fair enough, fair enough fair enough so he said he saw a tr- I was like so you know the uh, Will Smith Chris Rock slap right uh what about don't worry don't uh, don't worry. This is the only only time I'll, I'll mention it. This is as far as I'm going because this is actually uh, the crit. The I don't get why people uh, can't remember the words exactly, but essentially they compared uh, Will Smith and Chris Rock's little slap thing incident to the Twin Towers. This is like just imagine uh, Will Smith as the as the plane and Chris Rock as the Twin Towers. And they're uh, functionally the same. That's fucking violence stupid. Violence only begets more violence. I'm kind of pissed now. That's so fucking disrespectful it's to people so, that die during that. It's disrespectful, and I only think it's funny because that is so fucking brain dead. That is unironically so brain dead. How do you exist? This is why Twitter discourse is a fucking joke, and discourse in general on social media is a fucking joke, and why no one takes YouTube comments seriously either. It's even taken less serious, seriously because YouTube comic big with uh, scams and spam. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, like I, I actually get upset when people do do shit like that. I'm not gonna name examples because some of the examples that come right to my mind are the sort of things that also are full of fucking drama. But mm-hmm. that's so fucking dumb. Yeah. And I don't know if it's a generation thing or if people have always been that petty either. Because, well, welcome back, Pacey. One thing I would say is that, like, a lot. So I remember there's this guy I watch. He's a bit of a controversial, uh, Augie RC, and he and his two friends were debating about, uh, some, about some bullshit. And at the end, they were talking about like, uh, the hypersexualization of the current generation. And it's like, I say, and my response to that conversation was, people have always been this degenerate, this horny, this mad, this petty, this disgusting since the Stone Age. We fucked people's eye sockets. I've read those stories. That is true. If we, if we dignified it, if, what, if tomorrow the government said it was okay to fuck uh, somebody's dead body, dead eye socket. There will be uh, thousands of people doing. That is true. Yeah, the horn, the horny degeneracy is not just the new generation. It it was it's baked into us. It's weird. It's stupid. And the only thing stopping us is the fact that it's socially unacceptable and i am more thankful that that is not socially acceptable uh is this uh i always think those arguments like uh, oh we're only this vitriolic this mean this big of a dick uh dick shit and this horny now because the internet exists no it's just in your face right now this what you're saying online right now this is humanity we've all been like this we are all this angry, this petty, this stupid, this brain dead. The only difference is that it's in greater volume in your face. It's not something that you're saying one time on the on the news and then forget about. It's on your phone all the time, every day, 24-7, 365. I need to get that quip of Armstrong from of Armstrong from Metal Gear Revengeance. <laughs> what was it uh 24 hours something of bullshit something like that i don't know i i want to believe it's 24 hours of liberal bullshit i don't think he specified liberals I, know, I, never, but... I don't think he ever specified it but i always think like when 
someone does a stupid meme targeting a political party, it makes me laugh. I there was like today, uh, someone was like made a a boo a uh, boomer bottom top text bottom text uh video audio video meme of like uh arm uh one of the quotes was oh, shit I only watched it today twice I watched it twice and somehow I don't remember oh wait, it wouldn't be on my computer because I I'm not signed into my normal YouTube account here shit but he was talking about hey uh, you said about like non-binary weaponry because he uh he what he doesn't not understand what non-binary means. oh my fucking god why are people so fucking it stupid joke. it was it was a joke because uh raiden was the one saying like, do, you, do you even know what that fucking means because like he's the one politically correcting him oh that kind of meme okay yeah raiden was the politically correct person while armstrong was politically incorrect and understand it and was misinterpreting it and putting it into his message. My god. And it was so fucking funny. <laughs> Nano and, then said, son. And, and, and apparently he made a tweet where he got ratioed by Dictionary.com. He got uh, ratioed by who? Dictionary.com. Wow. He's like, wait, let me pull up Twitter. <laughs> Non-binaries, <laughs> Jack. You say she got ratioed by dictionary.com. You know it's bad when you're getting ratioed by dictionary.com. Uh, there is this one political uh, left act activist that faked her uh, tire being slashed by a white ringer. The fuck? Uh, she slashed her own tires, and mm. the Michelin man. She got ratioed by the Michelin man. He said, "You did it. That's not consistent with someone slashing your tire." <laughs> it's the day someone gets ratioed by the fucking Michelin tire man. <laughs> you know you fucked up then. You you just need to you just need to uh, throw away your phone. You 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 can't be on the internet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you can befriend the Michelin man, but if you get ratio, you best just leave. It's like you're done. Yeah, you get ra you get ratio by any small brand, less like Michelin Dictionary dot com, anything like that. You might as well leave. I'm trying to think of other ones. I wonder if anyone ever got ratioed by Adam and By Adam who? Adam and Eve. Uh, the sex toy website. Oh. Fun fact, I don't know if you know this, but uh, do you you know Penguin Z0, right, Charlie? Oh, uh, yeah. Moist uh, you know Belle Delphine, right? Yes. What about them? Do you remember their rivalry with sex toys? Uh, Vaguely. <laughs> Did you know Adam and Eve was the was his supplier, and all of his toys were given to him for free so he could uh, win against Belle Delphine? That's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Based. He had a, he has a warehouse full of them now. Damn. He owns ten Moby huges. He needs to hook those. Me are up. like ten thousand dollars. Wait, since when did they? Sex toy cost ten grand. It was either ten thousand, like five k. It was like something stupid expensive. Because I think it's made out of the same dildo is. So if some if a vagina was that big enough, you could theoretically fit it safely. Safely. But, Keyword. Yeah, safely. <laughs> safely. The point of the Moby Huge is just a joke that Adam and Eve made. No, that's it. But I think Charlie's the only man I've known, I shouldn't say known, but aware of, that has ever shot a Moby Huge. Wait, what do you mean by shot? Uh, if I remember correctly, he took a Moby Huge to the range and let, it, and let him and his buddy shoot at it. And let it rip? Yeah, they were testing the ballistic. 
uh, the ballistic strength of a Moby Huge. Was it with Demo Ranch? I don't know. I just remembered reading the title. I was like, that's fucking hilarious. Keep scrolling. That's the sort of thing a Demo Ranch would do. I don't know if they know each other, though. <laughs> I don't know. But he did say he wanted, at one point, to get a bunch of in you know YouTuber engineers together and to see if they could... Like, the challenge would be, how far can you launch a Moby Huge? It sounds to me like they could launch at a huge amount, but I'm just... Well, Moby Huge is actually surprisingly heavy because it's just a dildo, just huge. So it's full. It's dense. And Ace is actually... So you... Sorry, go yeah. on. So you have a... So the fact that a Moby Huge effect falls... So you have to. So if you're going to min max your against the your competition, you have to think about the aerodynamics of the average penis, along with the ball sack. So the ball sack is the thing that will actually stop. That will actually end up grabbing a lot of the wind and slowing the huge down. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a real engineering challenge because you. I think the stipulation is that you can create whatever you want, but you can't modify them. which would actually unironically be a true engineering challenge because there is a upper limit that you can shoot something without adding more force. Hmm. Like, for instance, uh, there's a reason why the military is trying to move, uh, change more of its weapons into railguns because mm -hmm. railguns only require energy to move uh, faster and faster and further. While ballistic weapons like guns and uh, normal artillery uh, have a upper limit that they can reach because there's only so much energy you can create from the explosions that you create in a miniaturized chamber or in a large chamber. I see. While rail is all energy. All oh, magnetism. Yep. Fucking magnets, how do they work? Oh god, I just remember that one meme. It's like, magnets, how do they work? And then uh, someone's balls get crushed. Oh, okay. I thought you understood the reference I was making to something else. Nope. Showing my age, I guess. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, you boomer. I'm not a boomer. Mm. Despite the fact that you're from the future, you're still aging. That's very true. Technically, I would be like a what a zoomer with an X, or maybe I would just or maybe I should use like a uh, Greek alphabet, a sigmi, a sigmar, sig, sigmar. <laughs> and the that generation is sigma. is sigma. We are the sigma generation. It's a good day to be an adherent of sigmar. <laughs> By the way, I have two traditions I want to ask. You sure. One. Do your best villain impression. All right. Let me get. If you need a phrase, I'll provide one. Uh, I got one in mind, but I'm gonna okay, see good. if I can. I wouldn't call the say last that... two people needed a phrase. I wouldn't say that this is my best impression, but it's the first one I came up when I thought about. Uh, but I might not be able to find it since this one is a from a Newgrounds, from a Newgrounds sketch. If you want, you can also uh, do the you know that one Sonic Adventures dub uh, video. I do not. Oh really? It's like. Are you talking about the uh, one about pissing in the moon? Yes. Uh, I can't do Eggman very well, to be honest. I was going to do... Well, the point, well, I wasn't trying to say do Eggman, but just... If you wanted to use, if you wanted to use an out and non... If you want to use a non-generic quote or just a generic... Well, we could probably try doing a few. Uh, I've been told <laughs> that for some reason I have a very 
good evil laugh. I did originally start doing the evil laugh thing sort of just like for the hell of it, but then I did it so much that it ended up replacing my real laugh and became a real laugh, so I do it uncontrollably now. I did kind of that. I, that happened to me once, and then I got bored of it, and I changed my <laughs> laugh again. My laugh changed, so. uh, but I was going to actually try and do Psycho Mantis, or rather the Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear, from a old Metal Gear Solid Flash animation on Newgrounds, that I can't, it's been so long that I actually forgot the name of the person who even made the video, but, but you would recognize it immediately because it's kind of that iconic. I actually haven't watched him in the animations when I was... you never been on Newgrounds? Especially Metal Gear. Hmm. No, I never actually watched the Newgrounds. Uh, I guess that's just... Uh, I guess Your people... age showing again. I guess people uh, don't really watch Newgrounds boomer. anymore. They kind of move all that stuff to YouTube nowadays. Yep. There's this one old Newgrounds animation. Uh, put it over to YouTube. It was a, a zombie apocalypse series about an old man trying to get his slipper. I've never heard and of that. He doesn't give a shit about anyone, but he accidentally saves like a big titty. Accidentally. Yeah. And the th I can't. I remember I got to the last of the series, and I don't know if he ever finished because he didn't. He never found a slipper. A rip. Kind of yeah, reminds me of Old Man Henderson. Huh? It kind of reminds me of the legend of Old Man Henderson. Mm. <laughs> my favorite one is my inner machinations have lived undetected for a millennia. I wonder if I can do an M. Bison impression. Let me see if I can. M. Bison? Yeah, let me see if I can do it. I was like, when I mean my evil impression, it's just like your own evil voice just doing a random. I can never like... find these quotes when I need them. <laughs> I guess I can't do the laughing part, but it's like, oh, this is delicious. Guess you won't be needing those tapes I made for you. You want me to get rid of them? Don't be hasty. Not until I've seen those street fighters pummeled into dust. Which should be any moment now. Yes! Yes! I wonder if anyone actually, under, if anyone gets that quote. It's from the really, really bad uh, Street Fighter animated, animated show back back in the 90s from when the, all that sort of stuff was in vogue. Wait, yes, yes. Is that that one yes meme? It's probably the yes meme. It's, a, it's basically M. Bison, and he has this funny way of saying yes. Yes, and for some reason, and for some reason, this is delicious. Became yes! Like, yes, 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 and um, yeah, yeah. the uh, ironically, it's not so robotic. What if you try to do a Glados impression, just a male Glados? This is a triumph. I'm making a note here. The huge success. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. My favorite is the uh, potato. Aperture science. Potato scene. We do what we must because we can. By the way, you shouldn't go for too far with that. I think that's still copyright. Are they going to copyright strike someone doing a cover of it? It's bots, dude. That's true, but that's kind of fucked up. Because like, I want you to remember... Portal was made before the standard that we now have that we can use game music and videos credit. Hmm. Everyone already knows the music of most so if anything, it helps with advertising. Hasto Robot says they can't copy strike a cover, but at the same time, I'm wondering if Jonathan Colton himself would care who is the one who I don't think he it. would care. Most people that create music are more flattered by covers. It's usually the music holders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know uh, whoever... What was their name again? I, could, I can't remember the name, but there's this uh, th song called The Black Sheep. And I can't remember who made it. But they did a that. video reacting to all of the covers their fans sent them. 
I almost guarantee that their music label has attempted to copyright these covers at one point. <laughs> and the band was just not aware of it. Rip. Yeah. I don't, I don't know a single artist that's against music covers. Like, fundamentally, as long as you're giving credit to who, uh, who was where the song came from, doing a cover is just a okay. At least that'll be my policy. Hmm. Well, I'm not. I don't need to continue the rest of the song if you prefer that I don't. So don't worry about. I'm mostly concerned about yours. Hmm. But, it, but I was expecting the potato scene because that's Glados so hmm. sassy. I don't know if you remember it though. I beat. Portal 2, all, both portals, but to be honest, I remember less about Portal 2 than I do about Portal 1, which is weird because Portal 2 was pretty memorable, but mostly, yeah, what, I remember, mostly what I remember about Portal 2 was GLaDOS being unable to uh, lie because she literally could, did not have the processing power as a potato to do so, and also the final scene involving a moon, which I will not spoil in case there's someone here who has yet to play Portal 2 somehow. Let's just say that Cave Johnson had the right idea. Yeah. Let's see here. I remember... Oh, great. My clap process... My slow clap uh, processes are still... Uh, still work. It's weird, because I always like to watch that... This animation that they... They waifudify GLaDOS... <laughs> They they made her an e a a dark dark skinned emo chick mm. that has her hair blocking one eye, and it's just like it's sassy as as all fuck. But I think I think the potato version's funny <laughs> because it's just your imagination. <laughs> I, I think mean, that's what... the best part. It's like only Whitley has the most expressive motion being just an eye mm -hmm. well uh glados the only i forgot the only thing that she ever i is just uh i'm slightly annoyed at you <laughs> i actually you don't even get you don't even see her panic you actually i remember correctly uh she she screams as covers cover up what Fuck is I, I fucking love GLaDOS. Mm -hmm. But my favorite type of villain is like the generic villain everyone thinks about. It's like, hey, hey. once uh -oh. again, I have foiled you, you Superman. I will soon rule the metropolitan area and get my ice cream. Not so fast, Joe Mojo Jojo. Did you say jo Joe's Mojo Jojo? I tried to say Mojo Jojo and I fucked it up and said Jojo Mo 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 Mo. I I I I I, <laughs> I fucked it up. It's 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 completely it's entirely fucked. Mojo Jojo. I don't even know if I said it right. It's been so long. Gentlemen, behold, more corn. <laughs> Gentlemen, behold the bounty I have provided you. Follow me, and I will provide you more. My All name I ask is... in return is Jake... the head of this child. Jake Zilla, the old schooler. Do -do 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 -do. I don't know the rest of the lyrics, so I could team hunger force. Do -do. Definitely do not do TV show openings. <laughs> That's a guaranteed. TV show is not on the same level, and I. Uh, what was the other question? What was the other question again? Oh yeah, the most cultured of questions, the best of the best. What what is your fetish? Armpits, booba, thighs, feet. Wait, booba, thighs, feet, booty. There we go. 
Which one? Mm, flat is justice. All right, you like you go for the booba flat. Mm -hmm. Nice. Me? Butts are cute I'm too, I suppose. Boobies. I like I like both nations. <laughs> then everything changed when the feet nation attacked. Oh god, I I it took I wish Mrs. would stop talking about her fetishes to me. I immediately my first thought was just about the call she admitted to me. She discovered that she's a foot fetishist. Goodness gracious. And she was like, Maka, I think I'm in defeat. And at that moment, my whole life died. Everything ceased to be anything. Honestly, I'm surprised you stuck with me this long, because he actually said you only have a time slot for 5 to 8. I do, but I've been waiting on the phone call, and it's not come yet. We're probably having a late, a late supper tonight. So I figured I might as well stick around. Okay, fair. Brain is on airplane, though, because I can't remember the other questions. Actually, what are your favorite games? That's a difficult question. I've kind of been in and out of video games lately. I guess they come and go. Well, it's more of like genre type I'm looking for. Oh, genre type's a lot easier to give out. Really big a big fan of 4X games. Uh, are four X games. I like FPSs. I love fighting games. Um, what else am I into? Play a lot of platformers growing up, obviously. I used to be really big into JRPGs at one point. And let's see. Is there a genre I've not I said? That is JRPGs. I really like space simulators, and I used to play mech simulators all the time. That's kind of a dying genre, though. I, like I recently uh, got a game called Garrison Archangel. What's that about? Uh, imagine a mecha fighting game. I guess a, an arena fighting game. Interesting. Where you get to customize your mech all the way down to your feet. <laughs> and all of those uh, parts have like special attributes about them. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's really cool because you really make a mech that really suits, that really complements who you are. Mm -hmm. You're someone that uh, has extreme social anxiety. Clicked. Okay, have a sniper and shield. And also put rockets on your back that make you slower. <laughs> so you constantly have to press dodge because you're always dodging. So Are you like me where you make a podcast that's purposely designed to talk to people because you're lonely, bored, and depressed? Well, you, what you do is you put, you throw away that shield. You uh, put extra rockets on your back instead of any type of armament that revolves around explosions, and you just start weeb dual wielding samurai bitch in this uh, hole. All right. Only time you're dodging is when friendship says no. But friendship is magic. But when friendship says no, that's when you pull out the katanas and well, you turn on your inner weeaboo. While you were busy making magic with friendship, I was studying the blade. <laughs> if, if well, Garrison Archangel is like Steam multiplayer, I would love to play that with friends. <laughs> I know it has a four. Actually, I think it does have a multiplayer thing. I need to play that with people. I get sick of playing with bots. <laughs> Must have cause they cheese, cheese, cheese. My strategy, my strategy of like going and guns, guns blazing. I used to. Because I someone someone liked to meme around, I would put like two missile silos on my shoulders, mm -hmm. and I will go slap slap, back away, rocket you, <laughs> and then just inch closer to you, and then boost behind you, slap slap, back away, rocket again. Nice. Yeah, there is a 
you actually have a limited amount of ammunition for weapons actually in that game. So it actually can turn into if you're a complete weapons based mecha, it can turn into a war of attrition. Beautiful. Yeah, so you would your entire build is around just destroying your enemy, obliterating your enemy, like in a matter of like uh, seconds to uh, seconds to minutes, while the other person could be just has a uh, last resort missile silos on their thing if they bother, and just be dual wield blades, and they're really high on. Like for me, I I didn't even put dodge boosters. I put charge boosters. I I was straight up that one, uh, you know those joke uh, joke pedophile memes like pedo bear and that one creepy lady chasing that child. I think so. Pedo bear is really old school as far as memes go, though. What well, it's like them? pedo bear is like really easy to describe. Yeah, I mean, I know who pedo bear is. I... Yeah, I was like that. That was essentially me. Uh, that was essentially me playing any mech game because I just <laughs> straight into you. <laughs> You're the one running away while I'm the one. There will be no getting chased with me. Nothing personal, kid. Shing, shing. Liar wolf. Shing, baby. You know, it's weird. I, uh, I don't call myself a I refuse. It's just a label like any other, honestly. Yeah, I was like, I, I went, I remember when I first uh, went into Nina Fonda's chat, I was like, yeah, I'm not a weeb. And she was like, why are you here? <laughs> are you lost? And I didn't elaborate. I was just like, staying in the chat, gonna meme around. <laughs> Actually, I think I did that with almost everyone that was bloody karma. Because, like, everyone that I regularly talk to... Actually, also, I didn't do that to Dex, because me and Dex uh, talked in Twitter DMs before we ever collaborated together. <laughs> I actually I still remember our first collaboration. Uh, it was in VR chat. He was actually, uh, in, actually in VR, and he just wanted to show me a... Uh, a horror map that was story based. Not really scary, to be honest. It was more noir intrigue. Is it the one that starts off with you in a car? It actually starts off with you in a boat. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You are an investigator going into a city that uh, has recently gone dark. It is extremely dangerous to get in this city and almost impossible to get out. Nice. Everyone around you is calling you a f and you allegedly give this boat to even get you in there. Mm -hmm. And you, there's also a side quest, which I did not even think that VR chat was this robust to support, really. VR chat can I do a lot of crazy things, believe it or not. I've seen yeah, some so shit. Weird. It's like I knew about VR chat porn. I mean, that's Which like is a, really interesting. VR chat porn is kind of like on the lower end. Some of the stuff really goes out of its way to immersion you into a new world. Yeah, the last one of time... my favorites is any time where it's a team deathmatch in VR. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to. I just like to own scrubs. I kind of want to. Play more. I should probably play more hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades, and get used to uh, playing FPS games in VR. Since it feels like that's going to be uh, you know, the next wave. What's up? How fucking expensive VR games are. They're not Especially any more expensive, quest, or at least well, on, on the Quest platform, they're expensive. How, there's what no are we sales. Talking like? Oh, that's why. There's no sales on the Quest platform, and I'm like, how much is Mark charging you guys? As much as they're willing to pay, I guess. Well, I was like, I'm talking about in terms of like, there is a percent charge. I'm talking about like, uh, oh, most, most stores like Steam, uh, Steam and Epic, uh, take a fifteen percent charge now. Uh, Epic has always been fifteen percent, but 
Steam was 30% until Epic made it clear, hey, we do not like that any other, that all of you guys that hold the apps here are charging 30% per transaction. And, and also make, are actively making it more difficult to go to alternative stores. Steam doesn't make it more difficult, but uh, Google Play and uh, the Apple Store uh, both both make it really difficult. Hastel is saying in my chat that they say it's because it's a console that there are no discounts and it's so expensive. There's discounts on the Xbox. Hmm. Tons, actually. That doesn't hold up as easily as you guys thought. I can actually fire up my Xbox right now, and there'll be like several deals that are not related to uh, Game Pass or EA Access, which are things I have because I have uh, Game Pass Ult. But I think the only excuse is like, uh, really, is just that Mark is possibly chart like maybe they put like a five percent extra ten percent extra charge to host your games on this platform because the only vr games that are on the quest really are games that you will think they first think of when you think of vr really except for pavlov i don't think pavlov's on vr yet <laughs> which should be great if when it gets on there because i want to fucking play some goddamn russian roulette okay so, is it not possible to purchase... This is probably going to sound like a stupid question, but I don't have a Quest. I have a Valve Index, so I really don't know. You really uh -huh. can't just buy games on Steam and then play them on your on a different hardware or something? Nope. It's something called DRM. It's the same reason why you can't buy, like, let's say... Oh, uh, Pistol says... Actually, Pistol Robot says that you can. Do you have to, like, hack anything? Right, or... really? So I was thinking, like, VR Someone chat... explained this in extremely gruesome detail in my idea. Well, I mean, right now. I'm thinking, like, VR chat is not exactly locked to Steam either. You see, and you see people of all stripes there. That I one's do... definitely cross platform. It's cross platform. So I kind of assume that the same should be true with some other games. You can play PC VR games on the Quest. I don't know what PC VR okay, is, to okay, be honest. Okay, so PC VR just means Steam VR, but USB. Uh, what I mean, what I mean, people, is that like, let's say your PC isn't VR ready. What oh. then? Something called a Quest Link. That still requires that you have a PC that's beefy. So wait, you need a graphics your card. Quest, your to... quest turns into a monitor and not the powerhouse. Oh. Yeah, which pisses me the fuck off. I mean the index just makes use of my 1080 I thought to run games. I have a GTX 960. That's why. Hmm. Yeah, you would have needed at least a 970. To be VR ready, yep. minimum at least. You know what's funny? Okay, mm -hmm. so a ten sixty on uh, on uh, Amazon is the same price as a nine seventy on eBay. So around two hundred and fifty. No, they're actually both one hundred fifty. Oh, they got cheaper. Hmm. Yes, they did. I I am annoyed that they're the same price, but it's also I am glad that they're going lower. It just pisses me off that like one okay one GPU is like super fun old and the other one is not that super fucking old and they're the same price and one's more powerful which one do you think i gotta spend a hundred fucking dollars 150 fucking dollars on huh i mean don't forget it also depends on the seller so if you find someone that's selling them both the same price that's just because the other guy is trying to screw someone over <laughs> well the most common price on ebay right now is a hundred people most people want a hundred and for their GTX 970. The only way you're getting it lower is through bids. And on eBay, you can re you can reject the bidding. 
bits are kind of difficult and nervous or kind of like a anxiety inducing anyway. Yeah, I remember when uh, there was a lot of car auctions on uh, eBay. Uh, there would be like a a car, a lot of lowball car auctions, and they will constantly like repost it to hopefully sell the car at a reasonable part as a reason at a reasonable part price quote unquote if not reasonable. Above. <laughs> yeah reasonable for the dealer uh but there'll be like several cars that are like only five uh being sold for like little five dollars and get rejected go ahead I don't care. You just can't touch my fucking chicken, you Still here? I'm still here. Okay, good. Uh, track again. Mm hmm. No, I actually lost track of what I was talking about. Uh, I think you're going off about something about PCVR or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I Why am I such a scatterbrain? Holy shit. Mm -hmm. It is Friday, and it's getting pretty late. I say yes, it's yeah. only nine o'clock in the nine in the evening. But yeah, I guess I'll just say, talk about fun shit with VR. <laughs> uh, have you ever played Onward? I have not. What's Onward about? Okay, imagine. I only, I don't ever play the PvP. I play the co-op thing. Mm -hmm. So I go on co-op, and it's like it's always a it's always a gamble of what you'll get. You'll either get like children, uh, nice children, racist children, or dickhead children. Sounds like Counter Strike. Or, yeah, but more often than not, you get adults just trying. And I, that's what I love. But one time. I got the Holy Trinity, but I also wasn't in the mood to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So a British man gets in, along with me, and two kids. These kids are assholes. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, they... Okay, so the... The British guy was understandably uncomfortable playing a playing a VR game with children. Mm -hmm. He's uncomfortable with it. He doesn't want them to be here. He was at uh, he was asking them to leave, and the kids were being really stubborn, just like not leaving. And the thing is that the British guy uh, was the no, I was the leader, and I was just like, "Well, come on, kids. It why why not just leave? Come on, come on." It's better. It just makes it easier. I just have to wait for two adults. Fuck it. Mm -hmm. And eventually, I just start the game because this goes on for like a whole fifteen minutes. Shit, man. We get so we start off every game <laughs> with the British guy killing the children. Ah, uh, it's cool and unusual <laughs> punishment. The back of my in the back of my head, I just think about Anakin killing the younglings. Not the younglings. <laughs> Master Skywalker. So, there's this one map, I can't remember its name, but it does a desert map, and there's this one spot, spot area where you spawn in this box building with a giant fucking hole in it with a generator inside. Mm -hmm. So, the first thing it does, he pulls out his 1911. Bop, bop, kills the children. I do not know how he always knows who is the child. He just has a child rate, anti child radar. Child sense. Yeah. So he instantly nerf, he instantly murks them. Bam, bam. All mm -hmm. right. And he goes, like, All right, let's play, let's play, bro. He dies in 30 seconds. 
Rip. So I am on my own. And I was so fucking stressed. <laughs> I was stressed out because I didn't know the number of people here. I forgot the amount. I forgot what was the difficulty. So I was treating like this uh, if it was on elite difficulty. Like I was going to be on, uh, I was going to, like it was Black Hawk Down. Like if I was one of the characters, like if I was one of the characters in there. I was like moving around, looking, checking all of my corners super carefully. I go to every corner of the map. I see fucking nobody. By the way, at this point, I killed, before I left the box, I killed like seven dudes. So nice. I leave. I check uh, every back corner. I see nobody. I go, I start walking back. Next thing you know, it's just an entire fucking platoon. It's raining, man. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's raining, man. Oh, so, hey. I, so honestly, I always come up with, I always pull up with my silenced weapon. And always have one loud one just in case. So I silently kill five guys. <laughs> I walk around and, fries. and I'm without even looking, I'm fully aware that I'm going to run low on my mate primary we weapon and we'll have to switch to my Silas 1911. Mm -hmm. Solo panic. And dun, 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 dun. I kill two more dudes before I get shot in the back of the head. Rip. And, and they're like, dude, you were fucking sick, nasty. How Holy shit, you were an assassin. Sick nasty. Yeah. It was the first time I it, I was praised by two different entire age different demographics. <laughs> and it was interesting. Because <laughs> sure like obviously like the it. kids did not have a problem with just like being chill, saying, Hey, I think you guys should just leave, it makes it easier, blah 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 blah. So uh we play we went to another map because at that point we had enough to where the map rotation triggered. And we ended up on this desert place. And mm -hmm. I get stuck with one of the children. <laughs> because for some reason, uh, the adult and the other kids split up together. Whatever happened, happened. Uh, and we were at the other side. We start searching around. Oh, I actually remember. Okay, 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 okay. We spawned inside of the bridge. Of the this is a dam, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the we're in the dam, and those two walk off together, arguing with each other the whole way. And I instantly hear screaming and gun gunfire this way, and they go silent. Mm -hmm. I just assume uh, they're just taking things cautiously. They're going, they're doing fine. There's no way they could have died. Ass, we're on normal. It's a hundred and three dudes whatever me and the kid go into the elevator we make a few call outs it's eerily silent and then they fight one of them finally goes on the radio uh he doesn't say that he's down it's some incoherent bullshit <laughs> so we go we go up to the top of the dam we observe our surroundings no one's there. We cross the bridge. No one's on the bridge. We go back into the dam. And apparently we didn't know where they died, but we found a sign. The, we found the 1911 he was carrying. Mm -hmm. And I immediately took all the ammunition that, was, that, that fell on the floor. But I warned the child that this is a bad omen that there has to be an enemy somewhere. They died. We're the only ones left. Enemy so we gates. start walking super slowly. And as I was turning the corner, bah, I'm dead. The kid dies instantly too. I was like, what the fuck? We got fucking murked, and that was the last session before I went to bed. Rip. And kid. Yeah. We're getting raided. Yeah. Hey, hero! Welcome to the stream. I'm having. I'm actually part of a podcast. Sorry, what was the name of the podcast again? I'm sorry. Uh, Hell Talk. That is correct. Hell Talk with Luke Zhao. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Gonna Hello, also... hero and heroes viewer. Going to also. How is your day popping?
Going to shout out Heroes Train and Luke Sao again. For some reason, Nightbot is refusing to shout out Luke Sao again. Let's get one. Wow, robots are racist. I see how it is. And there you go. Uh, thank you so much for the follow. Or wait, that's not a follow. That was a here. That was a rating. <laughs> Why was that delayed? That's weird. Anyway, thank you for the raid, save one. Um, my stream Monday, oh, Wednesday, Friday. We accidentally Friday. triple rated somebody. We accidentally triple rated somebody. Yeah. Like it wasn't three people. It was you somehow managing to get the raid uh the bot to say you raided three times in a row oh yeah i don't know what's going on with that hey yeah, Rejume. I, what happens is like when the uh stream manager glitches and you try to spam the raid button how many times you press the raid button is how many times the bot will register that you raided them <laughs> so i raided ima uh, three times. Awesome. Yeah. Bird Dragon, that was my uh, last stream. You were part of it. <laughs> the one uh, for the king, right? No, that wasn't for for the king. You were just yeah, you were just in chat yesterday. Oh, the previous one, that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah was, was that an alt account, an alt account, or something? No, that was me. Really? Why is your name different? Hmm? I mean, my Twitch account name is Lol's Time. I was like, I was expecting, like, if I were to ever find uh, find your thing. Actually, I know I have your stream pulled. Never mind, it's no longer pulled up. Uh, speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and shill this. Up. Oh, wait, apparently the word shill is also considered a bad word by Twitch now or something like that. Wait, really? I didn't even know that. Well, the other day I tried to type in shill. I don't know if it was into my chat or someone else's chat. I typed to try it up. Try it. Tried. I, I fucking speak English natively. Please, God. I tried to speak to type shill into chat and it was censored by Twitchbot for whatever reason. Which mm, is very weird. Yeah, that is difficult. I just realized how difficult I made myself by streaming so often. <laughs> How am I going to get average viewers to three if I have streamed a uh, a whole 51 hours streamed so far? It also helps if you stream at a consistent and uh, consistent, uh, consistent time or uh, each week. I wouldn't suggest streaming every single day of the week, though. I tried that the first time, and I managed it, but it did get painful after a while. Three hours uh, every night. Well, like, I've been doing this for weeks, actually. Hmm. I only recently given myself two days off in a row for streaming. I see. I used to have only one day off for streaming. That's kind of insane. And, the only... and I was like, ah, someone made a post one time, uh, someone I followed, saying, hey, tag yourself if you uh, stream three times a week, four times a week, five times a week was mm -hmm. the max. And I said, ha, pathetic. I stream six times a week. Six is an unholy number, you swine. Actually, yes, that six, kind of makes sense, six, doesn't it? Six. I stream four times a week. How about them apples? Pathetic. No, you. You are a... I can't say those words, can I? Shit. No, no, you cannot. <laughs> You cannot see your or are the chadly words ruined. A uh, hero can only take a max of four times, though regularly three. Wow, chicka, wow, wow. I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, I have to max out at four now too because I do need time to do other shit that is not streaming, especially since mm. I've streamed for around three hours each time. This is literally part time I levels. Is, so. I can't really make it consistent unless I. Want to dedicate myself to shorter streams, which I'm not a fan of. How long do you usually stream? Well, when I am scheduled at like to leave at four o'clock, I arrive at five and I pretty much stream right after I finish dinner. So I stream from five thirty to ten. Oh, typically. Uh, so 
pretty much like me, my, like myself. Except you, you actually hours. you stream around five hours. I stream around. I stream from like five to eight because I also need to grab dinner. Yeah, so it's like who knows? Maybe to make it more consistent, every stream will just be at eight, and I'll just change the streams to something more palatable for an eight for a only two hour long stream. I mean, it's really up and to make you. Saturday the long boy. It's pretty much what's important is that people know when you're streaming, basically. Oh well, like, yeah, I used that's to my do... problem. It's like my schedule changes by week by the week. Oh, so it makes it next to impossible to make it consistent unless I make every stream start at eight. You put it that way, it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, because like yeah, I heard the consistency thing. It's like it's really difficult. I love streaming for long periods of time. I have the stamina for it. And the thing is, I don't like making my podcast like on the weekends. So yeah. I so it's like, well, I would have to if I I have to only have a two hour long podcast, which is like, what information can I derive from somebody in two hours? A lot, but not as satisfying as <laughs> however long they feel like talking. I mean, I thought we did pretty well for the first couple hours of tonight's stream, even with the scuff. Yeah. I, I personally agree with that. And it's like, I don't... When it comes to the podcast, I don't like limits unless the by uh, the guest. You second. gave five to eight. Yep. Sorry, I gotta take a phone call. <laughs> I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. It is, seems that I am alone. Everyone, I have a question for do you organize your porn folder? Be honest. I'll be opening his stream momentarily. I know he sent me his Twitch thing a second ago. Beep, 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 boop. Wow, that, was it that short? I mean, it was just a call to confirm, confirm that the family is grabbing supper now. So we'll need to close uh, this up like now. But so far, Luke, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, I really enjoy, uh, enjoyed our talk today. I'm glad you did. So did I. Yeah, uh, this pure... is the closest thing I can get to talking to people offline because <laughs> I barely make time for myself anymore. Yeah, there'll be more in the future, I'm sure. And also, Hero, I do apologize that we're closing up here so soon after you all raided. But thank you so much for the raid. I really appreciate it. I would really appreciate a follow if any of you all would Look, feel free to look through my uh, previous broadcast to see if it's the kind of content that you'd be interested in watching on a regular basis because we do stream regularly Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Yes, yeah, so we'll be up again tomorrow morning starting at 8 Central Standard Time. Also, feel free to check out Luke Zhao, who is under close to reaching affiliate. They just need an average of three viewers left, and they'll be uh, as gods along with the rest of us and luke is there anything you'd like to uh, say or mm -hmm. anything feel free to like show yourself to you know well i am a in this form i am currently tracy lee a demon a demon contract enforcer here to serve your every pleasure and make sure you do not breach the contract of the demons uh, specifications please if you follow you get to sign a contract with me and tell me your deepest, darkest desire. But with that said, I would like to thank everyone for watching today's stream. This uh, pot, this talk was pretty interesting, actually. I got even more political than Bloody Karma, which was actually impressive. But that is, oh, but that is actually always a positive thing, in my opinion. If I can get someone to talk about something personal, I, I consider that a W. But with that said, I'd like to thank all again thank all of you for coming here and I will see you guys what am I streaming tomorrow I actually forgot who cares it's going to be 5 o'clock see you around uh, don't shit yourselves on the way out the door mm -hmm. later and tomorrow we will be continuing our, our some form of art stream tomorrow morning I'm not sure what I might continue M200 or I might pull up, put up some Bob Ross again and some lo-fi hip hop once again, that's 8 in the morning. I stream early so that, the Europe so that the Europeans and Asians can actually be awake when I'm online. 
Um, and thank you once again for the raid, Hero. It was all, it's always appreciated. And I'll see y'all next time. Oh, wait. Actually, I almost forgot. We should go raid someone ourselves, shouldn't we? Let's... Oh, I don't raid for Hell Talk. Uh, I will go ahead and raid You can someone. raid. I, I just won't. I, I just straight up closed it. Oh, no problem. Let me find someone to... Ah! If it's not... My, if it isn't my favorite shadow person, shadow being... Tonight, friends, we are visiting another a fellow uh, fic creative fiction writer and also a genuine, uh, the, probably the friendliest shadow you'll ever meet. We are visiting Shobra of the Shadows. Let me just type in their name here, over the Shadows. This channel is also intended for mature audiences, it appears. The raid <laughs> message I usually use is something to do with Lost Raid, but tonight we will be doing Hell Raid or Hell Raiders. <laughs> or <laughs> Hell Raiders. Once everyone is locked in position, we are going to proceed with the orbital bombardment right about now. Once again, thanks for coming. Shit. That's weird. <laughs>